So we have a very interesting situation going on right now. It's the Soul Series as Major League Baseball begins its 2024 season overseas, Dodgers, Padres. And I was excited, excited to come in this morning and talk about how the Padres have a 2-1 lead over the Dodgers. And my goodness, look at these Padres. They're defying the odds. Everybody thought this would be a Dodgers sweep. But they're uh, scrappy, and they're led by Hassan Kim, who's gotten a lot of press, warranted so, by the way, a former KBO All-Star, comes to Major League Baseball and finally gets to go to the to the home where it all happened and perform in front of his crowd of friends and family, and then the eighth inning happened. And the Dodgers <laughs> loaded up the bases and knocked in run after run after run after mm-hmm. run. We currently have a 5-2 ball game. Dodgers are leading in the <laughs> – top of the ninth inning and it's just you know it's just that feeling of like hey guys it's just a new season we have nothing to worry about and it's gonna be a good year and the Padres blow a one run lead to start it it's wild how it happened too I don't know were you guys watching yes, when the, the Jake Cronenworth thing yes so yes. With a one Went out the in, webbing of his glove yeah one out in the eighth inning a ball literally goes through his glove that would have been an inning ending double play that would have gotten the Padres out of it with a tie ball game 2-2 heading <sighs> to the bottom of the eighth and it literally blew up his glove that, well so it was this I, I mean they even were talking about on ESPN they were like it was like a slow dribbler 88 miles right. per hour off the bat and it just bounced through the webbing of his gloves <laughs> Earth, man. so yeah well, I mean, so, that, I mean yeah. you got like a hex there I, I I I don't know find a live chicken or something <laughs> Fletcher that thing uh do something to to get this off your man I mean trip on a damn acorn it, on a mountain yeah. man <laughs> Yeah, man. He'll come right at you, man. <laughs> okay, that's what actually. So, listen, yes, the Padres are losing to the Dodgers. It looks like they're going to lose this ball game. But, by I, the way, yeah, um, kind of a long game. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good point. It's it still, was fast. Well, till the well, eighth inning. Till the eighth inning. Yeah, eighth inning slowed everything down. Turns out the ninth not looking real good at the moment either. I think this game also, and this is just me talking out loud, might have been intentionally stretched. Like right, the right, producers right, right, right. gave the, hey, let's stretch this one yeah. out so the West Coast can wake up and maybe see a little baseball as they're getting ready for work. Yeah, we don't often have live baseball in studio. No. Ever. Yeah. Ever. This is the first time. It's really good. <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, um, Fletch, though, uh, we'll we'll talk plenty of Padres today. We'll get everybody's reaction as they're waking up to the box score of this one. Oh God. Um, yeah, and it's not getting any better, by the way. Um, we'll get back to the game in a second, but uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't first and foremost welcome back Fletch. Yeah, that's right, buddy. That's right. Okay. Yep. Stand up. Stand up, take a bow. This is a standing up issue. We're waiting. Uh, We'll keep clapping, you rude son of a. Yeah, one legged. Okay. The reason why he's standing on one leg for anybody who's catching up with the show for the first time this week. And uh, good morning and thanks for jumping in, whether you're listening on the radio or the free iHeartRadio app. If you are listening on the radio, just switch it over to the free iHeartRadio app. Stream us. You can take us wherever you go. Fletch, he was out hiking Sunday. With his dog Brock, when I, hiking. When I say hiking, that's an <laughs> operative word in that sentence. We'll get back to that. He tripped on an acorn, broke his ankle in two places, and then texted us immediately from the ER where he was laid up. And we're not <laughs> laughing because we think that's funny. There is nothing funny Mm-mm. about this. Mm-mm. There is nothing funny about this. Um, mm. What's funny though is kind of what's transpired since. So J Riff had to hop in the chair. And you know J Riff, he's dancing on your grave yeah. the entire time. Douchebag. Yeah, right. And well, well, and we covered that actually yeah, we, at that life was, yesterday. Yeah, uh, that may have been day one. That could have. been. I don't remember. But I mean, he comes in at five o'clock in the morning wearing the aviators. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. And that that surprised that, you guys? No. Well, I. You know what? There was no sun out. It, it <laughs> the did guns actually, are out though. It did surprise me. And he was wearing a medium shirt. Mm-hmm. Anyways, mm-hmm. he came in. The first thing he said, he goes, "So what? The hardwood and balls classic is off." I thought Fletcher was getting in shape. Wow. I was like, "Geez, I mean, wow. that's you go there first. That'd I mean, weird." Yeah, but he was uh, he was definitely flexing on you. And then the text messages that we've received from Ben Fletcher the entire way where it's been things ranging from, hey, I have no idea if I'm ever going to be able to come back in, too. Hey, could you guys buy me a wheelie scooter? But you didn't. 
no, well, we, we, well, we tried. Yeah, we did. It turns out when you're like, hey, can you go to Walmart to get this? It's not actually sold by Walmart. It's just fulfilled by Walmart, I much like had... Amazon fulfills you know who orders. Ended up hooking up the wheelie chair. Who? Lucinda K. From Kogo News? Yeah. Wow. Wow. She like texted Lucinda me out of the K. blue yesterday and said, Hey, I got a guy <laughs> in Curdy Mesa who like rents this stuff out all the time. <laughs> you know what oh, that is? You yeah. know what that is to me? What's that? A joy moment. It, it is. is goodness. Yeah. You know what that is? Goodness on a Wednesday. Wow. But um, can I set the record straight? Because I feel that? like there's been a lot of lies said on the show over the last two days. <laughs> It has hey, been funny. Hey, Padres got out of the inning. Whoa. Wow. Base is loaded. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> the score remains five to two. Go on. So from the start on Sunday morning, Kendall and I took little Brock. And thank God Kendall came. She almost didn't. She almost stayed in bed. And that would have been a bigger disaster. But to the Lake Miramar Trail, which is a flat walk four miles around Lake Miramar, which would have been awesome. We got about in the desert. 50. No, it's not. It's actually up north in Scripps Ranch. We got about 50 <laughs> steps into this when I tried to get closer to the lake because yeah. there's like a path that's concrete that walks around, but that's hard on dogs' paws. Sure, sure. So I was yeah, trying yeah. to go to the dirt path, which is right next to the lake, and uh -huh. walk that one with Brock. And on my way down the little slope, left foot completely slips out from underneath me. I then body slam, like, you know Mario when you hit double B? And oh, yeah. And he like yeah, goes yeah. down and like butt slams? Yeah, yeah. I butt slammed my right foot. And my ankle was kind of this way mm -hmm. when it happened. And so when I slammed, the biggest pop you guys have ever heard Ooh. just went. Ooh. And my and I immediately started swearing like a mother. Good. And Kendall was embarrassed for me swearing. And I was like, no, I just broke my effing ankle. And I said that about 30 times in a row. So how'd you get back? The Kendall had to walk back, get the truck because initially she was calling an ambulance and I was like, screw that. I don't want to pay $600 or whatever it is. And I didn't know that our insurance covers ambulance rides. I know that now. Uh, but net, then she went and got the truck, made her way back to me. And I had two guys luckily stopped on the path and like put me on their shoulders and oh, wow. hopped me to the truck and then got in. And that was the worst car ride ever. 15 minutes to what I thought was actually Rady Children's Hospital when we pulled in. <laughs> and I was like, Kendall, this is the Children's Hospital. But She's Sharp like, yeah, right. I know. <laughs> but Sharp Memorial is right next to it. Yeah. And thank you to all the people at Sharp Memorial for putting up with me. They like immediately gave me morphine because I was in shock because I'd never broken anything before. So I was yeah. like hyperventilating and sweating and all the things. Uh, and they were awesome. They put up with my jokes. They <laughs> fixed me up for the most part. And now I have a bunch of doctor's appointments over the next two weeks. So who knows how many more shows I'm going to miss? Well, on the bright side, um, at least today, no laps for Fletch. No, I can do laps. Wow. I got the scooter. Oh, oh, yeah. oh good point. Good point. All right. So never mind. Uh, laps are on. Laps okay. are on. Uh, because you do have one good leg and the other one's going to be on four wheels. So we should not feel too bad about that mm -hmm. um yeah listen much to our chagrin uh we 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 told those jokes every joke you heard on the air over the last six but hours of broadcast funny. uh we did not want to do that we just felt like we needed to <laughs> and so it really was it was like that hurt us more than it really hurt you i promise there was a point where i was like i wonder if they know how like serious this is <laughs> oh, oh of well, course yeah, yeah. dude yeah well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We knew it was. I've serious. been surrounded by orthopedic injuries my entire life. I've seen so many ankle breaks. I, I mean, I'm kind of desensitized to it at this point. That um, it's just gallows humor. Like when when you when you're an executioner, you can joke about death because death is all you see. When you're a football player, you joke about injuries because injuries are literally all you see. So. I, I, when you told me you broke your ankle, I'm like, well, sounds like a Sunday, you know, that's a pretty typical Sunday in the <laughs> NFL. Uh, no, but listen, you, you handled it. You manned up, you're back at work. It's only two days later, which I mean, probably two days too long, but listen, it's the point fine. is it's you're fine. here. You're it's here. Fine. Yeah. Uh, also, you texted us this morning and said, Hey, the computer in here is not working. And it's not. my initial reaction was, I literally was typing did it step on an acorn uh, and then I, I deleted it you know yeah because that was that'd be rude no no no. you that that's uh you should have sent that text <laughs> um so listen before we get into the meltdown that occurred in the eighth and uh and we'll see if anything can happen with the padres to turn this thing around um so, i just want to comment on going to south korea to start the major league baseball season i i honestly have mixed feelings about this mm -hmm. because we wake up early in the morning right. for this show right so when the alarm goes off at four o'clock i have to admit it is kind of cool to have an actual major league baseball game being played 
as I'm getting ready for work. And right. I had it on the television the right. whole time. However, I do also understand that for Padres fans, and there are many around San Diego who are interested in seeing every single game, some of them, this this is kind of, I, for a West Coast team, for two West Coast teams, it, there, it's a little bit of a feeling of like, what exactly are we doing here? Our guy, Maury Brown, he writes for Forbes. Yeah. He had this tweet yesterday that I thought was great. And it was like, Rich, how you say the NFL All-Star Weekend or the Pro Bowl Weekend, it's not for us, it's for kids. Yeah. He was like, these games aren't for people on the West Coast. Mm. Like, it's just not for us, period. Even though it's two West Coast teams, it's for people on the East Coast who are waking up for work, getting to watch. And then obviously, people in Korea. It's a lot like how NFL does those games for the people in London. And it's like trying to expand their audience that way, which I think is a big reason why these two teams are a part of it. Because look at who some of the stars are on both teams. I mean, between Shohei Otani, Yamamoto, Hassan Kim, you got a lot of Asian-born talent that are on these two teams and they're two popular brands. And so it makes a lot of sense for them to be there. But who's the losers in this? Well, the losers are San Diego Padre fans and Los Angeles Dodger fans who don't get to watch their teams really open up the season. Yeah, I mean, I agree with all of that. Uh, you know, you watch the game here. It, it, I, I wouldn't know this wasn't in the states, to be quite honest. Uh, you know, you're just, you're looking at the teams, you're looking at the field, you're looking at the stadium. Uh, it's actually really cool, except for the timing of this. Right. The, the timing is just it. It has that same kind of feeling when the Olympics are overseas. And I don't really watch anything but the highlights because the live events are while I'm asleep. So I don't really care to go watch them at night. That's uh, I already know who won, but uh, that, that's just the feeling I get. Even though I'm watching it live right now, I'm just thinking for the average fan who probably wakes up about now, maybe just before now, maybe they're catching the end of this thing. They don't know what happened. They don't know why it happened. So they're just going to see highlights. They're not going to rewatch this thing. Well, and that's actually a curious thought like i'm very curious to know whether or not they will rebroadcast this game i think you know, immediately after yeah i would assume so and that's a ball game right mm -hmm. there campusano okay. with the dribbler up the middle he's out at first and so it's a 5-2 ball game dodgers win the first game of the major league baseball season <sighs> they showed a quick shot of hassan kim in the dugout Kind of dejected. I'm sure he wanted to get a W in front of the. Let's go, Padre. <laughs> Let's yeah. show him how it's done. <laughs> um, Mike, uh, Mike Usher, assistant program director, sent me a text this morning on the way in that was absolutely perfect. Padre, it's already in midseason form. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Listen, the biggest issue last year. I, well, look. <laughs> there were so many issues last year. Uh, you know, Bob Melvin, AJ Preller, the feud between the manager and the front office, uh, the infighting within the front office, the expose that came after this season. But one of the biggest problems on the field was the fact that the Padres were in a lot of one and two run ball games. This was a one run game until the eighth inning, and they completely melted down. Loaded up the bases, two pitching changes later, the Dodgers score four runs, and that's the end of the game. Mm -hmm. You have a 5-2 win for the Dodgers. So it, it's going to be a problem until they fix it, and it's still a problem. Padres blowing one-run games. Did we overreact? Do we overreact to game one? Uh, Season's over! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did you expect to win today? I didn't until I saw they were up 2-1 in the eight. I know. I did the same thing. I did the exact same thing. And I thought, uh, I, I almost thought, God, it, this would have been easier on me if I would have opened up the game in the second inning and gone, oh, they're down 12 nothing. Right. Like, and that, and you just, okay, okay, this is how we're going to deal with this right now. Uh, but it wasn't. You had that hope. And then in the eighth, it's it's a, a, an error. Yeah. An error that changes things. But it, it wasn't wasn't his fault. That's where you get I mean, hung kind up of here. It wasn't his fault. Would use a better glove, dude. How is a little dribbler busting through the web of your glove? Like, I don't know who that's on equipment manager, Cronenworth himself, or just bad luck or just the Padres curse, but it seems inexcusable to me. Um, yeah. I mean, here's the issue. We said, okay, pitching could be a problem here. Pitching was good until the late innings. The bats aren't working still. I mean, we have four hits here. Here's the they thing. Had guys like Wade I, in the lineup. I, 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 Jackson yeah. Merrill, who's 20 years I, old. Wade I, has a hit. I, I, yeah. I want I want to call I want to I want to slow a roll because I do understand that this is 
this is going to be looked at. Like I just said it, another one run lead blue, blown. And no, that, we're overreacting true. and it's fun. But, it, <laughs> yeah, but, is, but it, is it fun? Also, like Mike Schilt, he, it was a bullpen oh. day. Like, I mean, he, ba he basically rotated through uh, a ton of arms. I mean, especially in the eighth, you know, got a, a little bit more out of hand because guys were loading the bases and, and struggling. But it, it's one of those things where, I I'm I'm kind of looking at this series as spring training extended. Same. Yeah. As yeah. long as like the Padres get home from Seoul, South Korea, and none of like the important players on this roster are injured, I'm going to be pretty happy with whatever the results. I mean, did they get blown out by the Dodgers? No, it was competitive until the eighth inning. Did the Dodgers do what the Dodgers do? Yeah, they wear you down. They mm -hmm. get you into situations where all of a sudden they got your their foot on your neck and they're saying, all right, now it's your turn to make the mistake. And yeah, whether it's unlucky or it's an actual mistake, it doesn't matter. The Dodgers always seem to capitalize. Hey, by the way, the Padres aren't the only thing going on this week in terms of sports. We got the Aztecs in action. That's coming up on Friday, 1045 tip off. You could hear all that action right here on your home of the Aztecs, San Diego Sports 760, as they start their tournament action as a five seed against 12 ranked UAB, the Blazers out in Spokane, Washington. We're not going to be in Spokane, but we will be at Dave and Buster's Hell in yeah. Mission mm. Valley. Mm. That's right. Doors open at 10 a.m. The watching begins at 10 30. First hundred people get a $10 power card to play. Chances uh, to win 760 swag, theme park tickets, a signed basketball jersey from a mystery player, and much, much more. $2 domestic pints, $5 bar bites, including nachos. Cheese flatbread, cheesy fries, fried pickles. Going to be a lot of fun. That, again, starts at 10 a.m. at Dave & Buster's on Friday ahead of the Aztecs basketball game. Hey, Fletchy, do we got halftime ready? Let's fire it up. Yeah, do it. I see a bunch of guys playing with their technique and fundamentals. Hey, Dave, we're we're done. We're being down to a level, not up. It's halftime. All right, Fletch, what do you got for us? Padres lost 5-2, oh. season's over, call it a, call it a day. Hugh <laughs> uh, Darvish so, went three and two-thirds innings. He gave up a run. Uh, Padres fell apart in the eighth inning when a ball literally went through Jake Cronenworth's glove. Uh, it was an error, and three more runs scored after that. It would have been an inning-ending double play. NCAA tournament last night, two teams punched their tickets, Wagner and Colorado State out of the Mountain West. Good for them. Uh, both punching their tickets to the field of 64. Two more games coming up tonight. Grambling State taking on Montana State. Colorado taking on Boise State. The winners advance to the first round of the bracket. San Diego State's first game is going to be Friday against UAB. Again, you can listen here on 760. Uncle Teddy will be on the call starting at 1045. John and I will have pregame starting at some point way earlier than that. Uh, but listen on 760 or join our watch party, Dave & Buster's Mission Valley. Doors opening at 10 a.m. First 100 people in get a $10 power, car power card. You boys going to that little Dave and Buster's 10:45 a.m. Are, are we going to that? Ooh, yeah, you're damn right. We're going to that. Ooh, yeah. After a bar cart Friday. <laughs> yeah. Keep it rolling. Yeah, I mean, just Literally. let's rock and roll. <laughs> we uh, we may have to ask somebody to pick us up, take us there. Hey, um, as we react to the Padres' first loss of the season to the Dodgers, everybody who's waking up to the news, uh, yeah, it was a five-two loss as Fletch uh, outlined there in halftime. It's um. <laughs> It's a struggle, man, because how does that even happen? Yeah, the curse continues, right? If you're watching the the screen reacting to oh my god. I mean <laughs> like, how does that happen? I've never actually seen that Me happen neither. before. I've never actually seen it. so and, and you're talking about a ball that went through the webbing of the glove where it literally just ripped the webbing out of it. And it was not a hard hit ball. So Jay Cronenworth, who's at first base during a base lo bases loaded moment. Uh, in the eighth inning, he goes to ground. I mean, gather up a dribbler. It was a tailor made double play ball. The first, it was taking him towards second base. He would have easily just popped it out of his glove, thrown to second. That would have gone back to first inning, inning double play. Yeah, it'd it have been tied two two. It would have been over. Uh, it would have been over, and the Padres would have had an opportunity to play for extra innings or potentially, I don't know, with some momentum heading into the ninth, maybe take a lead. But instead, a demoralizing four-run inning, Dodgers end up getting a 5-2 lead, and that's how the game ends because, uh, you know, it, it's just it just feels like this is how it's written, right? This is how you would forecast a Padres team to lose the opener, and it's a struggle, man. Every single season, it feels like there's a lot of hope, and then it does sort of feel like it's the same old Padres. However, 
again, if you look at this and you put it into the box, it's supposed to be appropriately organized in. It is kind of like spring training of, uh, uh, extended. If you look at this as kind of like a spring training game because it's so unique being on the road in South Korea, if you look at it as like, well, at least they could still split. I mean, you can there you can walk away from this and not be completely negative about you, it. You know what you're doing right now? What's that? Padre positives. You are Padre positives. <laughs> and did we learn nothing from last year with the two games? <laughs> like what they ended up losing the first two or three games of the season. Two, back to they back. They lost the first two. And I, I, what did I say the next day? I was like, honestly, guys, no big deal. This team is going to sleepwalk into the postseason. It'll be easy for them. Look how much talent they have. I'm not doing it this year. You, this game counts, Rich. You can think of it like spring training. It's on the record. They are 0-1 to start 2024. There's going to be 161 more of these. Yeah, and it's going to be 0-161 until, until it went. No. I, look, I, it's 0-1. I I, well, yes. I can't, I can't deny that this was eerily reminiscent of what we saw all last season long. Yeah. I but I do you know what's different though? <laughs> you cut out the cancer of Juan Soto. You got you got that bad juju. Yeah, you didn't out. need his bats in it. No. I, uh -uh. I I do I do feel like the energy around the team is different this season. It, it does feel that way. I think Mike Schilt has a different tone that he sets for the franchise. I think that the players sounded different during the spring. I would say, well, I would say, however, at the start of the season, it felt pretty good last last year. A year ago, right now, it felt like you had a super team. Well, so I don't know if I knew the attitude so much of the team. Yeah, yeah, that that's a good point. But they were rolling off of an NLCS that, bid. That is true. There you was know, a lot of highs. Yeah. Right. Like we were rolling in off of 2022 where they beat the Dodgers in the divisional series at Petco Park. With a damn goose out on the field. I mean, it just felt like destiny was ours and it was dashed by the Phillies in the championship series. And since then, it's really been all downhill. <laughs> Unfortunately. Will Eric Hosmer be an all-star this season? No, he won't. Well, maybe we're on the mic. Oh, gosh. All right. Listen, there's some NFL breaking news that occurred. We need to get to um, Aaron Rodgers has a reason not to run for office and to maybe stay as the Jets quarterback. <laughs> we'll get to that on the other side. But first, let me cheer everybody up and talk about something that I love. It's my dentist. Who says that, by the way? Who's like, you know what I love?
And, and uh, you want to come out and hang out with us out at Dave & Buster's Mission Valley. We're going to be there Friday. Doors open at 10. The party gets started at 1030. So we'll be there throwing high fives, playing some games, eating some good food, tipping back a few drinks because it's a Bar Cart Friday extended. Oh, it's a Bar Cart Friday. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. come on out there. Big Rich CD and Fletch. San Diego Sports 760. Uh, is everyone going out? Do we have confirmation on that? Um, as far as I know, the entire station's lineup is going to be in attendance at this event. This is a big one. Look, obviously, for many reasons, we're the flagship of the Aztecs. Um, we uh, carry all their broadcasts. Uh, we, we have hosts on our station who also host the pre and post and half and actually do play-by-play -play responsibilities with the basketball team. Mm -hmm. However... Do you know how many video games they have in Dave and Buster's? Like that's <laughs> that's the biggest. Like they and got, and they and had, like the air hockey. <laughs> no, God, they, got, they got they got all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's a Vegas got, casino with no risk. They got they got <laughs> Guitar Hero. Oh my! God. Dance Dance Revolution. Can I hop on? Literally hop. Well, it, it, yeah. See, that's gonna be tricky for all the. Uh, yeah, I don't think you, you're not gonna have the greatest scores unless you're just great at this um I, I want to open up the doors to the talk back feature on the free iheart radio app if you are listening to this show and you want to get involved in the show you want your voice to be heard on this show if you're a padres fan who's waking up and seeing a 5-2 loss and going well how did that happen and realizing that the padres did in fact blow another one run lead as this game was heading into the eighth inning the dodgers loaded the bases and knocked in run after run after run there was <laughs> Already one of the most unlucky moments I've ever seen in baseball where Cronenworth was ranging towards second on an easy double play. The ball bounced through the webbing of his glove, which I've never seen before. And that didn't stop the bleeding. The Dodgers scored three runs after that. The bases were still loaded. And so if you want to weigh in and you want to give us your thoughts on the start of the season, it's a little microphone icon next to the play button when you're listening to the station live 760 on the free iHeartRadio app. If you click that, it gives you about 20 to 30 seconds to talk to us. You can leave us a voicemail. We can play it directly on the show. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, watch your language if you can. Uh, it, just, it just makes editing easier on our end. I actually yeah. think you get kicked out now if you use any uh, naughty language. You do? Yeah, it doesn't even come through to me. What? So if you want to make sure it gets here... <laughs> How are we gonna play Naughty Word Generator Wednesdays oh, we ever played again? It in like a year. So <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we, okay. like, we can we can dust it off. Yeah, we can bring that back. The Conky <laughs> Seven Thousand is just hanging out over there next to the giant Steve Hartman head. <laughs> I mean, it's just right over there. It's in a box. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so you guys are both like married, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, would, aren't aren't you? Yeah, I am. Okay, but would you say your wife has seen like every inch of your body? Yeah, I'm naked. I mean, yeah, like, I'm pretty, I mean, like every inch, every inch. Yeah, I'm pretty there, sure there may be a fold in there. She there hasn't uh, hasn't got an eyeball on. So I don't think Kendall fully had until yesterday because okay. I wow. had to take my first shower. Wow. Okay, and hang on. Turns <laughs> out when you only got one working leg and the other one can't get wet because I'm in this like special temporary cast. Like it, you have to be really careful when you take a shower. So yesterday was like my first shower, and Kendall had to help the whole time. And dude, I was like angled so weirdly proportionately that she got full eyes wow. on every wow. part of the never before scene. Did you look back at her and she looked like that uh, smiley face emoji, just hearts for eyes? She is <laughs> such a saint. She didn't say anything, but I know it wasn't a pretty sight. <laughs> yeah, she, she hasn't slept in days. <laughs> <laughs> Since that moment, she's questioned everything. By the way, as I was walking to my truck this morning, um, before we came in, I was like muttering to myself, like, yeah, man, I ain't going to bang it. You know, like uh, Sandy Oku cool guy does. Yeah, and I yeah. got in the car and I went, wait a minute. When he says, just hanging and banging, man, is he talking about the man zone? Oh, there's no question. <laughs> <in my laughs> Why mind. did that just yeah. pop into my head? Like, yeah. I, I was thinking swinging hammers. No, I, I honestly feel like, uh, I honestly feel like, I almost said his name. <laughs> I heart San Diego cool guy. Yeah. I, th I think he's probably, probably a man's own client. If I had to guess, <laughs> he's, he's, he's just always, look at him. He's always hanging and banging. Yeah, man. man. And I'll tell you what he is. He's kind of yoked up. He's, oh. lo he's low key cut up pretty good. Yeah. And he's, uh, and he's, he's, he's wearing the tattoos. Well, oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he's got the, uh, got like this 
beard going now. Hey man, just in here getting a little roasted bean juice yeah. to energize in the morning. That's What's right, up man. with y'all? Yeah, I'm you know. just like, oh, I, I don't even have a response to that. I mean, I, I was coming yeah. in here to have a glass of coffee, sir. <laughs> ah, do, do you want some sweet and creamy creamer? It's coffee mates. Yeah. You double bagging that man? That's a mean <laughs> juice, man. Is that a double bag dark Colombian? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you right now, I haven't seen one since the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> All right, listen. The Padres lose five two. Yeah. Okay. Fernando Tatis Jr. O for four. Jake Cronenworth O for four. Manny Machado O for three. Hassan Kim O for three. Okay, we're gonna get back to that. Wow. We just wow. we have to put it on the side for one second because it's going to nauseate yeah. us. To no for another like one run lead. Bore for yeah. Yeah, wasn't good. <laughs> Neither was that joke. You might have to take a lap. You want the scooter? I was trying, I was trying to rhyme. It didn't work. Do I need a lap for that? No, no. It was a good try. It's an early lap. You no, know, no. It was Come a good on. try. My, so Williams. it was up late, by the way. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. So, like, four hitters you're really relying on this year went 0 for 14 in your opener. Okay. Panic level. Where you at? Well, yeah. <laughs> Text us uh, 70470. Start your message with team. Uh, the talk back feature again on the free iHeartRadio app. Just click the microphone button next to the play button when you're listening to our station here, San Diego Sports 760. Let us hear it. We want to hear from you, Padres fans. Uh, opener uh, kind of lost in similar fashion to many of the games you watched last year. So, what is your reaction to that first game, the MLB opener out in Seoul, South Korea? So, Mike Williams is a New York Jet now. The former Chargers draft pick, a first round draft pick wow. from the Chargers was cut somewhat unceremoniously. They didn't want to pay the man. They needed salary cap room. That's how it goes. It's a regime change. You know that there's going to be uh, some of the film is going to hit the editing room floor, as they say. Mm -hmm. And so he was one of the cap casualties. The Jets sign him to a contract that has a max value of $15 million. When it's reported that way, you know, there's going to be a lot of incentives involved. What's your reaction to this, though? I, I think uh, this is this is good. Good for the Jets, at least. Uh, I think it's obviously bad for the Chargers. Uh, I mean, Mike Williams is a, a solid piece to add to this Jets roster. And my reaction is the teams that we expect should be getting better here are doing it. I mean, they're they're putting it together here. The uh, the Jets, the Texans, adding people. Uh, that you know, Pittsburgh. Who thought they have to make some moves? They're doing it. 49ers tapering off here, but uh, mm. that's fine. Uh, the uh, no, but I, I think it's a, I think it's a good pickup for them. Aaron Rodgers will. It, I'm assuming Aaron Rodgers is going to come back and look like the Aaron Rodgers of old. And if that's the case, it may he may make him look even better here. Here's the problem with Mike Williams: he never finishes the season ever. So mm. it's like the incentive laden contract better be playing time incentives. Like, I don't even know if you need to add a yardage incentive on it. I think it needs to be if he plays all 16 games, he gets a majority of it. Yeah, but but I'm 17. telling you. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and Rich, you know this as well. Um, sometimes sometimes the injuries aren't there when you're winning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well no, Mike Williams like breaks his leg. Yeah. Well, and that's your stepped on an acorn out there. On takes the field. one to know one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he has missed like 25 to 27 percent of the games he's been available for in the NFL, which is it's a high rate of injury. I mean, look, it's a war of attrition out there. Everybody's hurt. But you're right, Fletch. He does get injured and he has an injury history and it makes you nervous, especially when you have a receiver who's approaching 30. He's still on the right side of 30, but he's 29 years old. I think the Chargers kind of happily let that one walk out the door. I kind of feel like I agree that with Keenan Allen, who stood his ground, he said to the Chicago press when he got there, he was like, they asked me to take a pay cut. And I said, no, I just, I'm rolling off my best season as a pro. And so the answer was no, get what you can for me, send me to a good situation, but I am not restructuring my contract. They just restructured my contract to give me more money for my efforts. And so he's going to stay on that contract with the Chicago bears and it looks like they're drafting Caleb Williams. So Keenan Allen has a shot out there. Austin Eckler leaves in free agency. He's a commander. Mike Williams goes to the New York Jets. And you look at the Chargers roster, they've unloaded all of their offense. So what did they do now? Even their tight end, Everett signed with someone else. I'm forgetting right now who. What what are they? I mean, are they going to reload in the draft? Is Jim Harbaugh's plan like we're just going to surround Justin Herbert with young Quentin talent? Johnson, baby? <laughs> Mr. Drops him. He's wide receiver one right now, but yeah. they got to go to the draft. Now there's all these rumors, and TD, you kind of brought it up. But Brandon Ayuk might be available for trade. Debo Samuel might be available for trade. Like the Niners seem to be doing some shuffling around, which great, great, great. Yeah, do that. 
Yeah, but, but I maybe mean, the Chargers rumors, go after one of them. Is rumors, what I'm rumors. What's uh, interesting to me about the AFC West with the Chargers and these moves happening, whether or not they're forced or uh, or they want them to happen, whatever it may be, it is interesting to go. What are they going to do here? Because all of a sudden, with the Raiders making these quiet moves, I'm like the Raiders are kind of the second best team in my eyes right now in the AFC West. However, I will say Jim Harbaugh everywhere. He's been minus Michigan where that was a little bit of a slower turnaround. It's happened immediately and dramatically. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at him at Stanford, big time football up there, he turned that program around around immediately with the San Francisco 49ers, same thing. And then obviously you got Michigan, the Wolverines in shape enough to win a national championship last season as he exits so with the Chargers, even though it looks completely or will look completely different this upcoming season, maybe there's a method to the madness. I like Minter as their defensive coordinator. I think that guy mm -hmm. does a great job fielding personnel. We'll see what happens. We'll get back to baseball, though. We want some Padres reaction on the yeah. text line 70470. Start your message with team. Also, that talkback feature on the free iHeartRadio app. Yeah, and you mentioned immediate turnarounds. Uh, we had one, too. With sdfatloss.com. Damn right. I mean, it really was an immediate turnaround. Within the first week's time, I was down 10 plus pounds. I mean, it, it was coming off fast, which seems impossible. I mean, so impossible that, Rich, you had to reach out to Wayne and Chloe and go, hey, um, is this normal? Should, should I be shedding weight this quickly? And they said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just follow the plan, I buddy. Just do what we say. Seven days in. I, I was only really losing weight for five days because right, the right. first two days, yeah. it's kind of like, Hey, like we're going to let you uh, have a little bit of the, you know, the fun before right. you get into the work of it. F yeah, five days into the weight loss portion of this, I'm down 14 pounds. <laughs> I was like, uh, right. Okay. Right, right. Which was stunning, but also awesome it because, awesome. because look, there's a lot of diets that you do. Maybe some of the fad diets you do where the scale just doesn't move yeah. and you feel like you're starving yourself or you're just exercising so much and nothing's happening. Not with sdfatloss.com. You don't have to exercise. You don't have to count points. You don't have to do some weird medical injection that as soon as you stop that fad diet injection that you gain all the weight right back. They call that yo-yo dieting. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do that with sdfatloss.com. You're going to talk to Wayne and Chloe. They're going to set up a personal life.
SDSU is back in the madness. The Aztecs face UAB Friday morning at 1045. Listen to all the action on San Diego Sports 760. Yeah, listen to all the action. Also, be there at Dave & Buster's doors opening at 10 in the morning, Friday morning, right before that Aztecs game. On your home of the Aztecs, San Diego Sports 760, we will have the full broadcast, but our full lineup will be over at Dave & Buster's partying along with the folks who care and there's many around san diego can't wait to see the aztecs in the march uh tournament as we have to call it all right so listen padre's reaction it's not good Mm. there's a lot of people who are struggling to make sense of how we waited all all off season long Uh, they fired or moved on from bob melvin he goes up to the bay area yeah you could say fired Kind of, yeah, it was parting of ways as uh, they amicably let him leave and go manage the San Francisco Giants. And so they have Mike Schilt now and A.J. Preller had less money to work with, but still pulled off a trade, got Dylan Cease in house. And so, I don't know, hope was renewed a little bit as we headed, headed, headed into this Seoul, South Korea series and they blew one run, one run uh. lead. So, OK, first blush, we've had about 30 minutes to digest it. How are we feeling? I mean, I guess, how am I feeling? Uh, it's almost expected, I guess. I, I was in the mindset for a loss. You know, my hopes were up a little bit when they were up two to one, but that was quickly diminished. I guess in the grand scheme of it, yeah, there are 161 more of these. Uh, so even if they lose these first two, trying to keep the Padre positives here, that that doesn't mean that's going to be the trend and they are going to have a blown season like, last year which also started out zero and two but it just doesn't feel good Mm-mm. i mean yeah. it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good when it's the same problems that you saw last season are right here again starting fresh i'll overreact this sucks <laughs> tatis 0 for 4 jake cronenworth 0 for 4 manny machado 0 for 3 hassan kim 0 for 3 like the, if you're gonna have any modicum of success this year those four guys need to have really good years. Like, and three of them need to be all stars. I think Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado need to be somewhere in the MVP conversation. Like the Padres, in when they cut the payroll, that comes with the understanding of needing your stars to be stars. And the Padres have stars, but if it's going to be a repeat of last year, are those stars going to be able to come up in the later innings? Because even when you give up a lead, like you should be able to battle back. And the Mm. Padres just have not shown us that over the last two years. Well, it it gets worse than that because you mentioned sort of the easy reach is always looking at how the top of your lineup did, but they also had nine walks. They also had four pitch clock violations. They had the early error and the obvious first base glove malfunction with Cronenworth in the eighth, but it's just messy. It's just sloppy. The Dodgers, the Dodgers didn't look sloppy. The Dodgers didn't look messy. The Dodgers look clutch. See, this is the difference between certain franchises is even though it's early and like you said, TD, there's 161 left to play. The Padres looked like the Padres. The Dodgers look like the Dodgers. Yeah, yeah. And you know exactly what I'm talking about because it's not just bad luck. Everybody's going to focus on the disintegrated webbing in Cronenworth's glove. Well, how about all of those issues with the pitchers? They know what the pitch clock is. This is no secret. This changed last season. They yeah. have a full spring training to ramp up and get ready for, and they blow the first game because there was a meltdown in the bullpen. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing is if you try to look for the Padre positive, you try to look for the excuses – the problem is you keep going up against the Dodgers who you go, well, how come they were able to get it together? <laughs> you know, other than the Dodgers were working with a team already put together as you know, the Padres <sighs> a week ago, they were going, we don't know who's going to be the starters. Yeah. So, yeah. but, but I mean, pitch clock violations, come on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's silly stuff. It's, it's a little sad. It's a little sad. It's a lot sad. It's it's a little sad. You can't say it's all. It's a, well, Let's we just go started. Padre. We dinner, just started. Dinner. Yeah, yeah. And we, oh, okay. How about this? I'll, I'll give you another stat. Look, this one. By the way, Fletch. I promise you, they win a couple. All of a sudden, you're back on the high for sure. How about this? On the bright side, Xander Bogarts two for four in an RBI. Yeah. There we go. Yep. When and, and as we learned, there. yeah, Xander is a verb. That's right. Yeah. You can Xander all over the place if you want. You could. It's also a noun. You could drop a hot Xander. 
That's right. But, by the way, uh, we will get back to the Padre reaction. We see the text line filling up. Yes, yes, yes. We'll get to your text, 70470. Start your message with team. Also, the talk back feature. If you want to reach out to us, leave us a quick 20 or 30 second voicemail. That's available to you. It's on the free iHeartRadio app right next to the play button. When you're listening to the station, click that microphone. If you want your voice to be heard on this station coming up next, we'll get your reaction to this Padres loss. And by the way, b- b-
Wednesday to those who celebrate Big Rich TD and Fletch with you on a glorious Wednesday. Happy hump day to everybody. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Uh, San Diego Sports 760. (laughs) That volume up here. Rocking and rolling. Um, So listen, uh, I say it's glorious Wednesday. It's not as good as it would have been if we're rolling off a Padres win in the season opener. Um, It's very difficult when a team does exactly what you think they're going to do. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, it's early. It, Games don't matter oh, right yeah, now. I know, I know. It's 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 um it's tough when patterns continue. Like if this was say, I don't know. Like I'm going to give you an example. Say this was an 11-10 loss, right? It was close. It was a nail biter. But the Dodgers, they just they just have one one more run on the board than us. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I, I shoot, I, maybe everything goes goes right for you know, a portion of the game and goes wrong for a little bit of the game, but the Padres come back. You know what I mean? Like, a, imagine if this game was, I don't know, a 5-2 win for the Padres, and it was the opposite shoe on the opposite foot where the Dodgers were the one who had the meltdown. We would fe- be feeling completely different, but this was oh, yeah. so this was so like the Padres from last year where they had a one-run lead or just a narrow lead in general, two runs, one run, and they find a way to blow it in the end. It's exactly what happened today. Well, they have uh, nine one-run losses uh, last season. Oh, it was up in the 20s. Yeah, it was crazy number. It was a wild number. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, either run. way. I mean, yeah, you're right. Here we go again. Uh, and that's and I think that's the part where you're like, God, you got to be kidding me, man. You just want to see something different. Uh, so I guess if, if they went out there and lost, but the bats were hot, <laughs> at least you'd go, how many were there? Okay. The San Diego Padres had a seven and twenty three record in one run games in twenty twenty three, which is the worst in Major League Baseball last season. Now this the, wasn't even a one run game; yeah, it just same. was in the eighth inning. Like, right. how many of these games did we see last year? Where it's the Padres had the lead late, they give up a few runs in like the eighth or the seventh inning, and then the, it just felt over. See, to right? Because today I'll ask you guys, and let's ask the text line seven zero four seven zero. Start your message with team. When they gave up the runs in the eighth inning, did anyone feel like in the bottom of the eighth or the bottom of the ninth, the Padres would put up runs to come back? Because I did not. Yeah. And see, I think that was more the story for me last year. The one run game thing stands out, but also the fact that they would get down early and they would never be able to mount a comeback. So you are exactly right, Fletch. As soon as they got down in the eighth, I went, it's over. It's well, done. Also, the and, no, sorry. Oh, go no, ahead. I was just because it was there was so many things that were a carbon copy from last season. That's the problem is I, I keep looking back going, well, it's. There's no change. Yeah. The, the the problem was last season, the Padres didn't have that dog in them, right? That that dog. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't have that dog. Like, and, and it's true. I mean, we like to tell jokes, but it's 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 the truth. Like they don't have whatever that fight is, whatever that anger is, whatever that, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like whatever that is, the Padres just don't have it. They didn't they didn't have it all of 2023. And at least the early sample here in Seoul, South Korea feels very eerily similar. And right. so you look at a team who last year we mentioned the seven and 23 record in one run games. How about the fact that they were the last team in major league baseball to win an extra innings game? Yeah. They lost 12 straight before they got a win. You remember that? Anytime yeah. we went to extras, it was like, well, yeah. this is going to be a loss because that's what they do in extras until it was. I mean, it was, it was in the fall when they finally got their extra innings win. Paris on the stream, Padre positive. Darvish only gave up one run in 3.2 innings pitched instead of seven runs in the first inning. Hey, so boy, Paris. Yeah, that's good. Real good. Isn't okay. that what, that's what you Darvish did in his spring debut, right? He gave up like seven, seven right away. Yeah. 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 Immediately. <laughs> was it, was it wait, great? wait, was that? Wait, did oh, Darvish no, no, do that? That was Musgrove. That, that, that was Musgrove. I think Darvish also had a yeah, really bad Yeah, I don't think Darvish did great. Look, you know what? Though? <laughs> it's just like, you know, <laughs> some people, they use spring just to, to test things out. And like, you know, they're just testing stuff out. From, okay, but uh, I'm going to push back on the fact that you could treat these two as spring training games. You can't. Okay. Okay. What did it end up being last year? It was like two games that kept the Padres out of the postseason, right? Like, because they were two games worse than the Arizona Diamondbacks were last year. Yeah. yeah. Two well, games are important, man. Well, the Padres never started to put together a string of wins. In fact, I don't know if they won three in a row until the end of the season. It was wild. 
I mean, it was completely wild. Yeah. It was right towards the end of the season. They finally started to string some together, but it was like, look, they need to win 12 out of these next 15 if they want to make the postseason, which obviously didn't happen. Uh, RPR on the stream here as well. 0 for 4 from Tatis, who played during the winter. Yeah. 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 Listen, I mean, it, it, look, a lot of the Dominican ball players, they go back home, they play in their winter league, and it's great, right? It keeps your skills sharp. Tatis, just uh, 0 for 4 today. I'm not saying look, but it's it's Tati's gonna be fine. Machado's gonna be fine. Like they like statistically, it's hard to oh, that, 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 oh, God, no, hang on. Hey, deja hey. vu. Statistically, they got so unlucky last year, it's impossible to replicate that. See, it's you say that. It's right. Well, it was last year though, was an imp, a statistical impossibility. We need to get Dan Zimborski back on yeah. the show. Like, because he actually makes me feel good about this Padres team. Because what Dan will say, and I've read some of his recent stuff, is he'll look at the Padres and he'll say, well, here's a team that everybody's going to say, yeah, they got some holes around the, you know, the rotation isn't set and, you know, the bullpen maybe could use an arm. And, you know, you look at the lineup and they're trusting a young guy in center field. But when you really look at the numbers, you crunch the numbers, there is almost no reason why the Padres should not be in the in the postseason this year. So unless they're statistically unfortunate and unlucky again this season it's almost impossible to be as bad oh, as they were last year I, I, I cannot believe we were having this exact same conversation but it's true I mean, I, I, Rich, you it, said it, that last it year. is true i'm not saying you're wrong i'm just saying you were last season okay and we're having the exact same conversation it's but it's hard for lightning to strike the exact same oh, it's not impossible man. i'm not saying it's impossible but it's hard for lightning to strike the same place twice it's 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 almost impossible for this team with the type of talent they have littered around the roster, unless there's oh, serious injury and implications to have as bad of a season as I, I completely agree. I mean, the, the talent on the team is off the charts. What's crazy to me is there was more talent on the team last season, arguably. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, well, I mean, not they, even argue. Yeah, what? there's no there's no uh, look. They had Blake Snell, they had I, Josh I was, Hader, they I had was, Juan Soto. I, I'm just trying to be fair. That's all. Yeah. I'm not saying they didn't lose anything. By the way, we don't know the full talent level of Jackson, Farrell, See, Merrill. Now we also don't know. Talk. Now you're starting to sound. <laughs> now, look, that's that's hope. <laughs> right, but the extracurriculars of it all, <laughs> they, they matter too. Like, so last year, statistical impossibilities. We talked to Dan Zimborski how many times he deals with the numbers. Statistical impossibilities that happened last season, right? Well, what does that not account for? Issues with your GM and your head coach. What has proven us that that won't happen again? I nothing. Like right now, everything seems hunky dory with Mike Schilt. It seems awesome. What's to say it's not going to happen well, again? I'll tell you what's, what's different. to say the I, problem wasn't well, cut out of the clubhouse this past I know, but, but you could say that about anyone at any time. No, the, no, no, no. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I completely disagree with that. Look, yes, there is a hangover effect. There's a holdover effect. Nothing happens in a vacuum, and things influence. Other things like last season absolutely has an influence on this season. I'm not saying anything you guys are saying is wrong. I just have a difference in opinion because it's too early to say for certain of anything. And the other part of this is it's a completely different feel in this front office. AJ Preller has been put on warning that if this doesn't go well, it's over for AJ. I mean, it's it's almost publicly known that the brass with the Padres are pretty fed up with spending that kind of money and getting the kind of results that they've gotten in his tenure. AJ Preller is a losing general manager. He has won zero championships. He's got the deepest he's gone in the postseason is an NLCS bid followed by a historically poor season. As in, two out of 10 has been actual winning seasons, including Only, last year, which was a disaster. And by the way, one of them was a shortened pandemic Bingo. season. So this, mm. this has been a disaster of a tenure for a general manager who's been given more leash and more rope than just about any general manager in any sport I can think of. And I think right now he's the third longest tenure general manager in all of baseball. So I say again, this is a different year. There's a completely different feel. Like, I don't, I don't think they're going to let A.J. Prowler run this team from his office, you know, 10,000 feet above the Padres playing field. And just be satisfied with that. If things start going sideways and there's proof that AJ Preller's meddling is having an impact on in a negative way, or at least that's inferred or it's felt, or Mike Schilt explains that to people who will listen to him, 
I think he's going to be defanged. I think they're going to hand over maybe more of the responsibilities to Schilt and his team at the field level than we've ever seen a manager have in San Diego before. And th that's a big if. I'm not sure if that's how it's going. I'm not sure if there's already been internal structure conversations like that. But that just I'm just saying everything's different this season. Everything's The cards are on the table, and this is a huge moment for the Padres. Now, Kevin did tell us a few weeks ago, maybe a few months ago now at this point, that Mike Schultz and Kevin AC are more eye to eye than anyone Kevin or uh, that eight. Mike Schultz and AJ Preller are mm -hmm. side eye to eye on pretty much every issue they've had more so than anyone since Jace Tinkler. That's what I was trying height? to say. Do we know that? <laughs> Words yeah, yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah, Can we look that Mike up? Mike Schultz, Schultz, I mean, on issues. So we'll have Kevin on at 8 30 like today. Yeah, he's got to be pretty tall. I'm curious what <laughs> Kevin has to say about all this. He's probably going to tell us we're crazy for putting this much stock into one game, and maybe we are. Maybe one game tells us nothing, but from what I saw today, it felt a lot like last year's team. It's it's natural, it's commonplace to have overreactions when you see something that, especially when it's something that you've seen before, especially when it's a team you care about. The text line is blowing up, 70470. Start your message with team if you want to weigh in there. Also, the excuse me, the talkback feature is available on the free iHeartRadio app. It's right next to the play button. If you're listening to San Diego Sports 760, uh, we have that talk back feature. You just press that microphone button. You can leave us a 20 to 30 second talk back. Uh, let's get to some of those. Uh, so we have people who want to hear, <laughs> want to have their voice heard on the Padres as they open their season with a loss to the Dodgers in Seoul, South Korea. I'm afraid. <laughs> Matt, who's tired and angry from uh, Colorado Springs, we appreciate that, buddy. I, uh, I, I kind of agree with all of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, listen, I think it's cool. I think as a one-off, I can deal with it. I do, however. I hate the fact that this yeah. isn't for us and we're Padres fans. Right. And Dodgers are in Southern California too. And you have to wake up at some insane three o'clock in the morning. And watch this game. If this was uh, the Mets and the Yankees, would you care to get up and watch this? I, well, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't get up to watch it. No, there's no chance I would get up to watch it. I, I but I, I would say this, it would make more sense to me. Okay. So well, I'm curious, are Mets and Yankees fans on the East coast who might have a much easier time watching this game Are any of them watching? Well, it? That, that's what my point was. I don't think they are. I don't, I, I don't think they are. I don't know how many Padre fans were watching. I know I got up at probably three 30. So I saw the tail end of you Darvish's start. Yeah. And I uh, jumped on John and Jim's YouTube thing. They were doing a little watch party and there was probably 90 people in their YouTube. It's so all like, okay, well that's 90 people who are watching the Padres. How many more are? Yeah. Um, 510 in th ours. There were enough. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now because our text line is exploding. Uh, how about this? Uh, Tommy fam is close to signing <laughs> fam to the rescue, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Tatis will be fine from another texter. Manny will be fine. Crone will be fine. It's still early. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, but is it, I, I, is he saying blah, 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 because it's the same story that we keep trying to say, or uh, this is all hogwash and I, they will be fine. I No, he's mad. He's like, yeah. can we just F and win is how he signs that message. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just one of the, Oh, how about this? Every time Rich says statistically impossible, take a lap. That's from the <laughs> seven, six. Oh, you, you better start counting these miles right now. Jesus, that's going to be a lot of laps this season. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I mean, it's just on and on and on. Oh, how about this from the nine one three? Did you guys get the impression that she'll pulling pictures much faster than Bo Mel? It seemed effective today up until the eighth. I think that was a plan because he's treating this almost like a wild card series. He about it last week in one of his little media scrums where he calls everybody by their like, hey, Kevy, well, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But Schultz talked about it. He said that they were going to be er like early polls for starting pitchers. It was going to be very much like a wild card series where everyone was going to be available because now you have this like week or at least a few days off before you have to get any of these guys going again. Does that bode confidence in you? I'm telling you, treat this like a spring training game in your brain because that's the way the Padres are treating it. Oh, man, oh, that's, man. That's the way the Padres are treating it. Just, this is spring training extended. So if you're going to get bent out of shape about this, just you have to match the intensity of the team you're watching. So if they're going to treat it that way, 
I'm going to treat it that way. Oh. We got another talk back again, reacting to the five, two loss of the Dodgers in the MLB opener in Seoul, South Korea. Here's the next one. Hmm. Okay, so let's check this out. I, I understood. Yamamoto is throwing tomorrow for the Dodgers. I understood. Up, so he goes, look, the same problems of last year. It's the offense. We wish we had Juan Soto. And then he yep. went, Shabu Sleeven. Seven, seven, <laughs> I think he said the Sleeven stadium Shabu. sucks. Dome stadium should be outlawed. <laughs> and then he went on about the Dodgers pitcher tomorrow, which is Yamamoto. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't know if the stadium sucked, but uh, but I... I <sighs> I got a positive. It's just, it's, just, it's just hard to be like, why? Why is this the same? That, I that's a, where I have a hang up. Big positive from this morning. Yeah, Major League Baseball teams in America need to adopt the cheerleaders on the dugout. Yeah, you know what? That was very much uh, like a minor league baseball kind of a feel, right? Yeah. They yeah, get yeah, up yeah. on the dugout and dance, and I'm I'm here for it as well. I think it's just fun. I mean, it it doesn't. I'm not saying it has to be cheerleaders but getting up on the dugout and dancing throwing out shirts that's cool I think man be cheerleaders i'll give you yeah I, they were i will give you another positive <laughs> ha sung kim getting a standing ovation his first at right. bat you know gets an opportunity as a and by the way the ump did the right thing he uh he hopped in front of the plate he dusted off home plate to give him a little more time to wave to the fans he tipped his hat to the crowd like Hassan Kim deserves that. Hassan Kim put in the work. Hassan Kim spends his offseason getting better at baseball. This is the type of guy you could trust to be sort of that, sort of that foundational piece, or you know, somebody who you can rely on. Your, if, <clears throat> well, but, <laughs> everything you're saying is true, but also zero for three. Yeah, he's but also, it's one game. he's also the framing of our house. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> we, yesterday we built a house using only Padres players, mm -hmm. and Jake Cronenworth was the drywall. <laughs> He was a drywall. Well, uh, hopefully that drywall is a little stronger. Well, because as it's of right now, it. it has a hole in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're, gonna it's, to, we're gonna have to do some patching, I, I, which is oddly, oddly accurate that that worked out that way. <laughs> it really did. It really, really did. I mean, look, I, I just don't overreact in general. I try not to in my life. I feel like when you're looking at one of 162 and you're trying to like make any sort of bold proclamations, it does feel eerily reminiscent. It does feel just like it did last year, the way they lost to the Dodgers. And by the way, the record to the Dodgers was abysmal last season. So off to a very similar start. However, again, I'm going to match their intens intensity. If they're going to be pulling pitchers and they're going to be running, you know, Darvish off the mound after three innings of work, and they're going to be, you know, it's a rotating cast of characters in the lineup, then I'm going to treat it like a spring training game. Now, when the Bulls get flying for real, which, by the way, they will after a week off where they're going to have a spring training game or an exhibition in between now and the start of their, you know, stateside regular season, which is weird, but OK. Well, I, I mean, it is what it is, you know, that then then they start counting for real kind of like opening day at Petco Park is probably when you can start saying for sure, like, OK, well, then, yeah, this is where the season begins, because I don't feel like they're treat they're treating right, this year like the the regular season. Rich, these do count like the Padres record is 0 one right now. And we know last year, like I, I was guilty of it more than anyone of saying, oh, it's early. This team could just sleepwalk through it. They all mattered in the end. And yeah, this one will but, matter in the but end. Would you panic if the the San Francisco 49ers went down by three points to the Bengals in the season opener in the first two minutes or four minutes of play? The answer is no, you wouldn't be panicking. Each of these games equivalents to like half a quarter in a football game, less than half a quarter. I, in I a wouldn't football be game. panicking because I have faith in the 49ers roster right now. I do not have faith in the Padres roster. So yeah, the yeah. panic, mm -hmm. I think, is warranted because if we're seeing the same issues pop up, with the stars, panic. I mean, here's a Padre positive. Give it to me. Last season, opening day, they didn't lose to the Dodgers. They lost to the Rockies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this this year, opening day, they only lose by three against the team that's supposed to win more games than everybody else. They lost by five last year to a much lesser team. Right, right. And, well, last year they had seven hits. Okay. Today, four. Okay. 
They gave up 17 hits. <laughs> right. So there's today? that. The no, whole last season. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, what did they give up today? Uh, today, what did they give up? Tons. I think it was like nine. They gave up nine walks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah like, that, I mean, that's, that's, not, one, that's not good, it turns out. That's nine base runners just given bases, which, by the way, four of which were for pitch clock violations. See, See that, just seven hits today. Okay. Well, okay. Well, that's pretty good. But pair that with nine walks. Yeah. Which is a lot. disaster. Yeah. It's 16 base runners. Okay. Look, here's the deal. Guys, um, we have morning monologues coming up. We mm. blew through that. Yeah, uh, that's her, you know, listen, that's something that we have to make good. Everybody waits for our morning monologues. Yeah, we, we keep getting these text messages of like, "Are you going to do some monologuing?" Yeah, and the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. we will. Yeah, uh, that's, but, monologue means solo logs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have so many solo logs to. Sh-
Tony B on San Diego Sports 760. Yeah, we are partnering along here. Big Rich TD and Fletch, San Diego Sports 760. Indeed, we got a pair of tickets to go see Social D, North Island Credit Union Amphitheater. Bad Religion going to be there. That's happening April 12th. Tickets and info at Ticketmaster.com or just keep it locked in here. Also, $50 gift card to Islands. Yeah. Hey, now. Hey, hey now. now. Uh, Islands has a vast menu of items, a family-friendly, beachy vibe atmosphere with delicious food and drinks. Islands has the happiest happy hour starting weekdays at 3, the cheesiest cheddar fries and coldest beer in town. Visit Islands, find burgers and drinks, or keep listening for your chance to win those. Hey, by the way, um, Islands hooked me up with a couple of gift cards for the show. Say what? And I haven't spent a single dollar on those. I don't know. This is the way my brain works. Like, it took the family out to Islands on, what was that? I guess it was Monday night? No, Sunday. Sunday night? It doesn't matter. (laughs) It was earlier this week. And uh, I didn't spend a dollar on the gift cards because, like, no, those are for me and Fletch and <laughs> Dale. Those are not for you guys. It's Big Rich TV and Fletch. It was. It is strictly <laughs> forbidden for me to spend this on anything <laughs> other than us. So, anyways, man. Um, long story short, we go. To yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Speaking of islands, we were at Club Kokomo's launch party last night for okay. their rum. Yeah, th- they r- announced three rums. Uh, so that you know, it was Mike Love, the mm-hmm. Beach Boy, mm-hmm. works in conjunction with Club Kokomo. He was there. His son Christian Love was on stage playing with his band last yeah. night. Actually, Mike got on stage and sung some of the old Beach Boy songs. Dude, it was fun. It was fun. It was great yeah. party. But uh, our friends Taylor and Jeff from Bar Card Fridays who came in here, Jeff from Seven Caves, as well as Kokomo, Taylor from Kokomo, uh, invited us down there. Man, it was a blast. It was a blast. Yeah. So thanks for the invite. A lot of fun. Fletch couldn't make it. He was wheelie scooting around <laughs> on a broken ankle. And we're very sorry about that, by the way. You do... You do look better now that I've gotten you a monster energy drink. Mm-hmm. You seem like you're in better some spirits. life back in those eyes. Yeah. Right. How you doing? Why, why, are, why are there socks on the handlebars? There's a reason <laughs> that it's a used scooter, right? Okay. And if you come in here and touch the handles. Oh, which, they're sticky? Super sticky. Yeah. yeah. That's gross. Yeah, you, you keep those socks on yeah, those handles. Yeah. You have no idea. By the way, those handles, man. <laughs> I mean, you never I never why the socks are on. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Um, okay, listen. Good we'll get, God. We'll get back to the Padres in a second. They lose 5-2 to the Dodgers in their season opener. We see your text, trust me. And if you want to add on 70470, start your message with team. We want to hear your reaction to this loss in their season opener. Also, if you want to hit us up on the free iHeartRadio app, there's a talk back feature. If you're listening to the station's channel, San Diego Sports 760, there's a little microphone button next to the play button. Click that. You can leave us a talk back uh, and it can be up to 30 seconds of you complaining about the loss or maybe celebrating some Padres positives. If yeah, there were any to celebrate. Well, you never know. Somebody could it, find the silver lining. Here's the bummer is when you're having to, you know, look at things at different angles to find the positives. That's that's the bummer. Yeah, no, I get it. How about, though, we had basketball action last night. Virginia. Virginia falls to Colorado State. I was talking to TD about this earlier when, Rich, you were doing one of your laps around the building. Yeah. But it's huge that the Mountain West does good this year in the tournament because the Mountain West has gotten this reputation of really outside of the Aztecs, nobody advancing past the first round of the NCAA tournament. Yep. Well, this year is the best year the Mountain West has ever had in its history, period. So seeing Colorado State come out last night and dominate the way they did against Virginia who, let's be honest, Virginia has a checkered past in the tournament as well, and they're a a down year, obviously, this year, but Colorado State dominating is good for the Mountain West. Boise State plays tonight. If they are to dominate against Colorado, that's good for the Mountain West. All these things add up to the Mountain West needing to advance three or four of these teams past the opening round of the NCAA tournament because they got six in this year. It's time to not fail in the first round. The Mountain West needs to be good in this tournament. I completely agree with you. San Diego State feels like a lock to advance to the round of 32. Oh, God. Why would you say that? They feel. Why would you say that out loud? They feel like a lock. I'm not going to say I'm I'm not guaranteeing any victory, but let's put it this way. If they're they're not in the second round of this bracket, it's bad. That's a a big problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, because they're. I mean, look, I haven't watched much film on Alabama, Birmingham, but I can, pro- I can promise you the Aztecs are better. <laughs> promise you that. I, um, that's all I do is watch film. <laughs> on the Blazers? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't get enough of it. I mean, you are really breaking it down. <laughs> that's what I love about you. 
<laughs> did you guys, if you sat down and watched last night, did you get that feeling though? Like, oh, we're almost there. It's there's Good. a crackle, man. Right. Like, the first four is always a little disappointing because it doesn't have the same feeling. I watched a, a, a decent amount of this game because I'm interested in Virginia. They, dude, they have to. So Virginia goes from like a number one overall seed in college basketball this decade to a bottom dweller in the bracket. They have By the to way, multiple times this decade. Everything now. Yeah, no, they've been good for... So I mean, you remember, they were the one seed uh, this, oh gosh, maybe 2019, and they lose to UMBC in the first round. They were the first one seed to ever lose to a 16. Yep. And then the following year, they're a one seed again. They win the whole thing. And then since then, it has been a great, it's been a downfall of this program. And so there's a big article out on ESPN this morning saying they, they need to reevaluate from the top down of this basketball program because, Rich, like you said, it's gone from the tippy top of where you could possibly be down to being in one of the first four games of yeah. the of the NCAA tournament. Like, that's embarrassing. It's Man, bizarre. I, yeah, I had to catch uh, some highlights this morning. I was watching Curse of Oak Island last night. Understandable. Yeah. Um. By no, the way, deal. they still don't know what's at the bottom of that pit. No, no. They <laughs> They unfortunately do not, which is a big complaint from Sarah every time I turn it well, off. See, they, it's like, know, this is the same damn thing every time. Nothing happens. But you're just curious if they'll ever find out. Right. Because now, right. would you ever have the stones when she turns on like Beverly Hills Real Housewives to say they do the same thing every single week? Absolutely. Nothing ever happens. Absolutely not. No, but, I'm, <laughs> but also like Beverly Hills, I'm in on. I, I do. I like that one. I, I like to follow that one. There's a, there's a couple of them I don't care, but Beverly Hills is good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's yeah or, Orange County. I'm in. Here's what I'll Salt say. Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. I'm in. Like Salt Lake, City, Salt, Salt, Lake, Salt Lake City has surpassed Orange County for me. What about the Real Housewives of Spokane? What? <laughs> Did they have that? No, but the aspects are going to be should. in Spokane, Washington. <laughs> That's the dead rich. No, it's, I, I will say this huh. about the real housewives. Some of um, those housewives are not Spokane for. <laughs> wow. <What? laughs> can I ask this question before you take your life? Yeah. Can I ask this question? So what is the, okay, for years now, years and years, people have been talking about the real housewives. Right. That there's men and women, by the way. This yeah. isn't just one gender. Yeah. It's like. There's there's a consensus of viewers that say this is actually fun to watch. If I was going to find an entry point, like if I was going to find a way to tag into this and say, okay, now I'm off to the races. What Real Housewives would you say I should jump into? Yeah, I would, I would go uh, Orange County. Orange County? Orange County. Yeah, ju I jump in Orange County. That is the, uh, they are the OGs, the OC. Jump in right there. RHOC. Yeah. Real Housewives Orange County. That, that is, yes. RHOC. Honestly, yeah. go back to season one and watch. We did that during COVID. Kendall, like, made me yeah. watch all of Real Housewives of Orange County. Like, you started from the, the, the beginning? Very beginning. With Slade? All the way back. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you, you say go back to season one? Like, I if mean, if you have a if, global if, pandemic and there's nothing to do, yeah. If you go back to season don't. one, I don't even know if it's like widescreen. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I need COVID 24. Dude, yeah. It's <laughs> before they all had plastic surgery, I mean, so they all don't I even look need, the same. They all, they, they all still look great. Yeah, I, they do now. Yeah, I need a new super virus because but, I, I kind of feel like I'm getting left. How much? What season are we up to now? Oh, like God. 17. Jesus. Yeah. yeah you want know. to go back to one? Well, I, I, you I need to go back I'm to be one. Dead before yeah. I finish this, <laughs> I need to go back to one. Just jump into some OC. Just jump into some OC, and then, and then get a. Actually, if you want to start with one of Salt Lake City, there are only three seasons, and it gets wild fast. Okay, I right. mean fast. Okay, Salt but Lake honestly, City? it sucks. It does. Terrible. He's a liar. He's a liar. You don't he like just it, or you, do, or you just don't want Kendall to know that. You oh, like it's a terrible it. show. Yeah. Okay, all right. I see you winking. <laughs> all right, I got you. I'm reading between the lines. <laughs> All right. Also, listen. lap for Spokane. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Spokane. Wait, can I, can I do the lap like in break? Because if I do a lap right now, there is no way I'm going to get this disclaimer <laughs> in. <laughs> All right, another side, we get your Padres' reactions to their loss to the Dodgers in their season opener. But first, TD, I mean, every commercial break, you take out your phone, you're opening up a certain app, and yeah. you're just busy. I mean, I can't help myself, man, because look. <laughs> Are you all about NBA action? Because you got to try Pick 6, the newest fantasy app from DraftKings, an official partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers can earn a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 in Pick 6 credits when you deposit $5 or more. And getting started is simple. Just download the DraftKings Pick 6 app and sign up with code S.
Packers. 10 a.m. is when the doors open over at DMB. That's right. And for everybody who shows up, we are going to have some special prizes. There's going to be a uh, Aztecs jersey signed by a mystery player. You're going to have a ten dollar yeah. player power card for the first 100 listeners who walk through the door. Um, also, the Aztecs are going to be tipping off at 10:45. They're going to have bar bites and drink specials. So get on down to Dave and Buster's again, 10 a.m. on Friday, and join us. And by the way, speaking of giveaways. We've got those social D tickets coming up on the show. We yeah, got the fifty dollar gift do. card to Islands coming up on the show. We do. We got so much to do. You know what I'm really looking forward to on Friday is seeing TD get on one of those like motorbike simulators. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I look like uh, I mean, like like normal biker dude. Yeah. yeah. I you also know, wouldn't be surprised deal. at all if <laughs> normal. Yeah. TD got into one of the like car <laughs> simulators where you have to like gear shift and everything and mm-hmm. like drift around stuff, mm-hmm. and he's like really good at it. Dude, wouldn't shock me at all. He's going to be good at every (laughs) video game. I I mean, he is the product of a misspent youth. (laughs) Well, everybody was, everybody else was like, hey, (laughs) girls are cool. TD was like, you know what's also awesome? (laughs) Galaga. Sonic the Hedgehog. (laughs) (laughs) Unbelievable how fast he is. I've collected so many damn rings (laughs) and those red shoes. Holy smokes. <laughs> and luckily, I'm saving all those little animals. (laughs) Who's the chick on Sonic the Hedgehog? What's her name? I don't know. Tails? No, no, Tails was. Oh, that's the, the sidekick. Yeah, I don't know what the girl Sonic oh. was. So what, what, I was thinking of Tails. I think isn't she like the squirrel or whatever? No, oh, yeah, Tails is. Yeah, but Tails, Tails Trav, was a you dude. think she was hot? Tail, like, hold on. When Trav, were you they, in the cartoon they sell characters? The Tails costumes, like at Halloween. I'm gonna be honest with what? you. So <laughs> it's, one, I mean, it's kind of hot. One year, <laughs> so one year for for Halloween. This might have been two Halloweens ago. So Ty want to dress up at Sonic. He wanted me to dress up as Dr. Robotnik. Oh, yeah. We have that TikTok up of your oh, yeah. like Dak Prescott take while you were Mr. Robotnik. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That was that year. And Annie dressed as tails. And Sebastian went as a bulldozer, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like overall bulldozer costume. I, uh, I, so, I, but we get home from this Christmas or this uh, Halloween party and, I, and where everybody's dressed up. So I'm like, uh, Annie, I'm going to put the boys down. You keep those tails on. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it was a good costume. <laughs> I mean, yeah, look. And by the way, I kept the mustache yeah. on. <laughs> and the goggles. By the way, I uh, finished the first level real fast. <laughs> What the hell is the matter with it? All right, listen. The, so the Padres lost. The Padres lost <laughs> to their season opener. I mean, look. I'm just now. I'm looking up Sonic sexy oh, Halloween costumes. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, she she didn't have that one. I'll, I'll find the one. It, it was it was cool. Um, <laughs> um. Yeah. Look, the Padres lose five two to the Dodgers. There's a lot of people who are waking up to this news, and now we're getting tweets like the one that <laughs> like Fletch just, Fletch just read to us. So there's some people who are waking up to this news, but there's people who woke up at 3 in the morning to watch the Padres, and one of our listeners had this to say, Fletch, if you will. Waking up at 3 a.m. for my favorite team to break my heart. Now I know what it's like to be a soccer fan. <laughs> It's a very funny tweet. <laughs> it's and it's exactly right. Like this is so uncommon for a baseball fan is any baseball fan to wake up and have a box score staring you in the face or have an opportunity to catch on to you know whatever time you woke up. Maybe you woke up in the four o'clock hour and yeah, I don't know, you caught the fourth inning on or whatever. You get to watch baseball at this ungodly hour of the morning, and the expectation is okay, cool. Like Getting my day started with live sports, that's fun. No, it's not fun. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Not when the Padres pitching staff walks nine and they have four <laughs> pitch clock violations. ESPN has uh, will Yankees win over 91 and a half games. I, I mean, it's it's hard to fathom a 91 game, uh, 91, 91 win, win season. season. Yeah, I mean, it really is at this point. All right, um, let's hear from more of our listeners. We have the talk back feature on the free iHeartRadio app. You've got that little microphone button next to the play button. If you're listening to the station streaming San Diego Sports 760, here's a reaction to the Padres' loss. (laughs) 
Oh gosh, Bill Buckner. <laughs> that is what I was saying what? in the first hour. I'm like, <laughs> no. we've none of. If you guys ever seen a ball go through a no. baseball glove no. before, no. never. No, and it wasn't like it was a scorcher. It wasn't like no. it was a hard hit ball. Either the equipment manager, Jake Cronenworth himself, what the hell is going on with that glove? So they said the stitching <laughs> dis- had it since childhood. disintegrated. I, I mean, it's like, okay, you know, Jake, I, I get it. I mean, everybody's superstitious a little bit, but maybe when the stitching's starting to disintegrate, it's time to upgrade the glove. I'm just saying. I mean, restitch. Restitch it. Re- re-stitch. Like, yeah, maybe just get a new leather strap. Yeah, because the, I mean, the, it up. The, the leather held. The leather held. <laughs> You know what you see sometimes, especially at for- first base, because you got a guy like Manny Machano on the hot corner who can fire just piss missiles at you. Like sometimes it hits the the webbing yeah. of the glove and gets stuck in there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that'll happen, or it's like a hard line shot. Uh, you know, up the alley between first and second, the first baseman, he gloves it and then has to throw his glove to the pitcher who's covering first. Like that happens. I've never seen a slow dribbler toward first go through the webbing of a no. glove. Was Manny at the hot corner? No, he's DHing right now. Yeah. There's Wade. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, there was no problems there. No, no, no. <laughs> he yeah, had the error in like the third inning that gave up a run. Oh, actually, oh, no, yeah, that's, that's true. Right. The there early problems, error. Though. And then you had the nine walks, by the way. I already mentioned that. I, I, okay. Fourth Cron- inning. I think the error was in the fourth inning. Cronenworth. Yeah, it was in the fourth because God. that's the Dodgers got yeah. that one run. On Damn the it, Wade. Come on. I don't on. think you can say that. What did we say? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We're not I was like, what did I say? One. Yeah, yeah, Yo, yeah. There, yeah. There was a pause, but not enough. Right, 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 right. Good call on that. I uh, That was an accidental GD. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, every once in a while, we'll, we'll use... Yeah. We'll use a little dump button time for an accidental GD. I think I, that might be history, though. That's the first time I've dumped TD. Ever? ever? I no, think so. Well, there was one on purpose I did uh, when we were... Um... <laughs> I'll tell you after the break because we don't have any dump left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. There were corks involved. Yeah, there were so many. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so listen, guys. Uh, we will continue getting your reaction from the Padres on the other side. A 5-2 loss of the Dodgers in their season opener, the Major League Baseball season opener in Seoul. Um, but first, I want to talk to everybody about my shrinking waistline. That's right. All of a sudden.
60. Happy Wednesday to those who celebrate. Happy hump day to all. Big Rich, TD, and Fletch with you on a, I, I don't want to say somber morning, but it is one that all of a sudden, maybe a truth was revealed to us. All right, what's more broken, the Padres or my ankle? Okay, Jesus. We're right <laughs> Text on. line 70470, start your message with team. Out of the frying pan, into the fire we go. Yeah, look, the Padres lost. Anybody who's waking up to this news, we apologize to break it to you for the first time, but it was a 5-2 loss in their season opener to the Dodgers in Seoul, South Korea. The Seoul series continues tomorrow. Padres will have uh, Musgrove on the mound. He'll face Yamamoto. Uh, today, it was more of a bullpen day, I guess you would call it. Uh, Darvis pitched three and some odd innings, and then it was just into the bullpen we go, and it was sailing until they got to the eighth inning, and then there was a complete meltdown. It's so weird as you're saying tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm like, well, no, you mean like tonight. No, tonight. But no, it's actually tomorrow. Yeah. The, the game happened today. Which, game. which, for some reason, I can't quite wrap my head around. <laughs> it, was, it happened yeah. hours ago. Baseball has happened. Yeah, right. We are the post-game show right now. <laughs> um, baseball weird. will continue to happen tomorrow. <laughs> so next season, does Major League Baseball go, hey, look, that Soul Series worked. We need to have more of those. Well, it depends. Now, viewership is is king. If you get a ton of viewers, well, guess what? You will be rewarded with more games internationally, especially in Asia. You know, Korea, South Korea, they haven't played there. I can't remember, but it's been years and years and years and years since Major League Baseball has played a game in in South Korea. So if this works, though, if there's great ratings here, well, you're going to see more games in Korea. And I would imagine this was a huge hit in Korea. Like a huge, massive, right. just this whole week, all the social media that we've seen out of Korea, people are stoked for this game to be there. So even if the numbers are crap here in the U.S., which I imagine they probably will be <laughs> overseas is what MLB is looking at for this one. Just like the NFL looks at London viewership <laughs> when they're playing games in London and the U.S. numbers are still huge for the NFL, but they're trying to expand the product outwards and that's exactly what major league baseball is doing here and why wouldn't they look at the stars of the game right now a lot of them are asian born a lot of them are dominican born they should be expanding the game outwards that's a good point yeah no I, that that's that is a great point it's just I, it's to a detriment of the fans in the united states maybe we're which, not that important well i mean and major league baseball's numbers have been declining in the united states so if they want to stay alive maybe they do need to expand out uh, yeah no, but, that's that's true but I you mean, from a business standpoint right from a business standpoint but you know they're also trying to tweak the game a little bit to try to boost those numbers here in the united states and if baseball wants to stay alive does it does it matter to major league baseball that they would become bigger outside of the United States than within the United States? Which by the way, you know, you mentioned some of the tweaks to the game. I'm going to go address these stats here. Okay. I'm looking yeah. at, okay. Pitch clock violations for the Padres. <laughs> Wait, had, that, that was implemented last year. They, they got that under control. They have, you know, well, what? They, they had four of them. Well, in, the, in the first <laughs> inning, did it, Freddie Freeman get what? tagged for one? Uh, oh. Actually. Yeah. The Dodgers had some too, but, but, there, there were nine walks and four pitch clock violations by the Padres yeah, not pitchers. Saying it's good. No, no, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Um, Just and saying it goes both ways. It, okay, but let. Okay, I'm going to look it up. How many pitch clock violations did the Dodgers have today versus the Padres? I'm guessing it was, it was less. One. I think yeah. it might have been one to four. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, well, okay, I mean, do we do we do we find the positive here and say this is the start of the season? Some rookie mistakes here. They got to dust off the. I mean, the way you got to look at it is they're playing against the Dodgers. The Dodgers are probably going to be the best team in baseball again this year. As mu as much as that makes you want to puke, they're also probably going to get knocked out in the second round of the postseason. Which, yay, Do Dodgers doing Dodger things. I think the focus needs to be how does this Padres team with this roster, which doesn't feel complete to me at all, make it to the postseason? Right. That's all that really matters right. here. And once you get to the postseason, are your big three healthy? And by big three, I mean Cease, Musgrove, Darvish. Well, I think to make it to the postseason, they'll have to win some games. Probably. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I if I were the Padres, would want to win them as early and often as I could to make the later half of the season just a little bit easier than you did last season when it was every game mattered coming down the stretch. And if you didn't win 80% of them, you weren't going to make the playoffs because guess what? They didn't win 80% of the games and make the playoffs. And not to be the crazy overreaction on day one, but I 
believe in order to do that CD, in order to make it so it's an easy season towards the end, your main guys are going to have to perform really well. And today, Fernando Tatis Jr., 0 for 4. Jake Cronenworth, 0 for 4. Manny Machado, 0 for 3. Hassan Kim, 0 for 3. Well, and that's it, man. I mean, you're paying guys to bat, uh, you know, to hit. Hit. Yeah, forget it, about it, the Jake Cronenworth ball through the glove. Yeah. Stuff happens. R right. Weird things happen in baseball. Put some runs on the board, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, get get some players on base. Let's move them around. And we we were going to play small ball this year, right? I mean, that's a, that's what was going to happen. Also, by the way, here's the the tragedy of of this game. If it continues throughout the whole season, right? If this is if this is a microcosm of what's to come, is the fact that this team's just still not clutch, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not willing to go there because I compared this to an NFL season. If you look at this game in perspective. This is like the first five minutes of any NFL game you've ever watched, right? Would you jump to any sort of conclusions about the way a season is going to go for the Cincinnati Bengals or the New York Jets outside of like your quarterback getting injured within the first four plays like Aaron Rodgers did? <laughs> Bad like, example. <laughs> right? But within the first five minutes, typically nothing's going to happen that is going to determine the outcome of the entire season. Right. However... I will say this. It was a complete game. We watched nine innings of baseball. We watched the Padres do very similar things that they've done to years past. So I get it. Maybe within those first five minutes of the NFL game, a team that had too many turnovers a year before all of a sudden an interception is thrown or, you know, you're running back fumbles in their opening drive. And now the, the opponent offense has the ball and they're driving. Oh, so, well, same as last year. Well, context is everything. And when you put today's game in context of what happened last season, it feels awfully similar. Listen, uh, humans are creatures of habit. And have you guys ever heard of the 7-Eleven rule? No. 7-Eleven. Uh, great pizza. 7-Eleven rule. Great pizza. Great yeah. pizza. Also hot dogs. Uh, you know, those rollers. rollers. Yeah, what are those hamburger meat sticks the, they have? Yeah, they're... <laughs> Good God. Carnivore uh, diet approved. 7 Eleven rule. You uh you get seven impressions and or in the first seven seconds, you gain eleven impressions of someone of for when you first meet them. So that quick, your brain is already putting together impressions of who you're meeting. Yeah. So in that first five minutes of a football game, does it really constitute what happens for the rest of the season? No, but you develop impressions on what that team is in the first five minutes. If it goes bad in the first five minutes, you automatically go, they have problems here, here, here. Yeah. The, today's game, I developed 11 impressions instantaneously, and most of those impressions were, this is the same as we did last season. Okay, I completely agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with anything either of you are saying today. I'm also just going to inject into the situation the <laughs> the bigger part of the conversation, which is it's one of 162 games, which right. uh, you can't, you like mm -hmm. first impression, they can be lasting, but they're not, they're not everlasting. You can change first impressions. Look, I remember the first time Annie met me. There is no way she thought that we'd be <laughs> married with two kids. <laughs> she saw those butt cheeks and she wasn't like, I was locked that down forever. I was a freshman in college and I was wearing assless chaps. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I mean, girls find humor, humor charming. Yeah, I'm not this time. Yeah, right? <laughs> because I was, because it wasn't funny. I was standing in the room for ten minutes before she realized I was wearing assless chaps. But look, it's not about me. It's about the Padres. And Padres by the way, but knowing how classy of a lady Annie is, it's shocking that you guys yeah, are actually together. really, really, oh, dude, one hundred percent. Also, I, by I, the way, like, yeah. By the way, last night at the uh, Club Kokomo launch party of their new rum. The as the band was playing and Mike Love from the Beach Boys is up there singing, we were dancing like idiots. Hey, you're you're clapping along. I'm <laughs> kind of doing the Carlton thing. Yeah. And uh, and Sarah Beebe from across the hall films us. She posted online. I get a call immediately as I leave, as that was posted, and she's like, "Why are you dancing like an idiot?" From, and I was, from your yeah, Sarah? from from my Sarah. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, Rich and I were both dancing like idiots. No, no, he he was doing something cute. You look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, should you ask her to delete that? <laughs> Story of our wow. life, TD. God, God, man. I'm telling you right now, nobody... You guys, I'm like, it's so, it's like hearing that, right? It's, it's always the other, the shoes always on the other foot for me. Like Annie's always like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I, okay. I'll give you an example recently and then we'll get back to the Padres. I had to host a, an auction for a, a school gala. Okay. I did address as Elvis Presley. 
Okay. Of course. I, Why would as one would? I'm I'm a giant ham. It was Vegas, so I was thinking, what's more Vegas than Elvis? So I put on a golden shiny fanny pack. I handed out fidget toys to the crowd, and I was doing one for the money. I, mean, I was really like, and God. What you gonna pin there for this, dude? I was having the time of my life. It felt like the crowd was behind me. I got a lot of attaboys yeah, as I was walking out right. there. And he was like, I am so embarrassed with what you did on that stage. I was like, why? I was like, I think it went pretty good. I was like, why, why, watch this. I was like, if I make eye contact with someone, they're going to come over and tell me how good of a job. It. And I'm like, looking at people. And they walk over. They're like, hey, great job, by the way. I'm like, yeah, thanks. And I'm like, see, it's working. And as they walked like, away, you're like, what a total douche. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, Annie's looking at me. She's just like. You don't understand what that was like for me. <laughs> she was like, imagine if I went up there dressed like Elvis Presley. I was like, I mean. Like, well, that wouldn't work. Yeah. Andy, can you please go up there dressed as Tails <laughs> from Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> I see a bunch of guys playing with their technique and fundamentals. <laughs> all right. Oh, you're up. What do you got for us? Well, we've been talking about it here all morning long. The Soul Series got underway this morning between the Padres and the Dodgers. It's and, over. It's over. It's done. <laughs> Pack it up. The season's done. The pot or the Dodgers climbed out of a two-one deficit in the eighth after a ground ball that was just fired off a bat. I mean, it, it might have been going a million miles an hour. A real scorcher. Yeah, a real scorcher. Eighty-eight just, to be exact. He doesn't seem that fast when you say it like that, but it blew through Cronenworth's glove. That started, actually, I think that was already tied 2-2. I was going to say it started a four-inning run for the Dodgers, but they it just got three more on the board. Anyways, Padres lose. They can't mount the comeback. They lose 5-2 to two. Uh, in the NFL. Star receiver, Mike Williams. He got cut from the Chargers. Now he's a Jet. Aaron Rodgers is going to be throwing to him. And in the NBA, real good here. Right? Real good. Real good. Some scores around the league. God, I don't know if I want to do it no, already. Do it. No, 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 you got to. Orlando Calrissian, the Hornets, 112-92. Okay. You guys Star Wars fans? Yeah. Okay. okay keep going. Good. All right. So Thumbs far, up. oh, so far, so good. Right yeah, you're on. Doing it. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. That was the one I was worried about. The Nuggets ten piece. The Timberwolves one fifteen one twelve. <laughs> Double <laughs> thumbs up. Right. Yes. yes. Atlanta Bell Grande. The Wizards. And you're done, son. Oh, and once you're you done, done, son. You're, you're done, done, son. Score there one thirty seven one fourteen. The Maverick. See Schroeder, the Spurs, one thirteen, one oh seven. I'm into it. Okay, right, all right. What is that? Is that NYP blue? Yeah. Hell yeah! Rich Gold, what was uh? Was Golden? Wait, what was the the uh? Silver spoon, silver spoon, silver spoon, silver spoons. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, New Orleans rhymed the Nets, one oh four ninety one. Leanne Rhymes. Leanne Rhymes. Okay. Leanne Rhymes. They're all making sense today. That's it. That's I, those are every well, game. I will say there this. There's only so, five, thank God. No idea who won. Still <laughs> any of them. Like, and and to his credit, the team with more points did win. Yeah. All every the, time. Every time. Every time. So still undefeated in that aspect. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So check this out. Padres lose five to you to the Dodgers. If you want to text us, and many people have this morning, 70470. Start your message with team. If you want to hit us on the talk back feature on the free iHeartRadio app. All you got to do is hit that microphone button. It's next to the play button. When you stream our station live, San Diego Sports 760, you click that microphone button. You can leave us a 20 to 30 second voicemail and we will play it on the show. We've already played many of those. Um, look, here, here's, here's the reaction, the knee jerk reaction. The Padres suck. They're the same team they were last year. Here's the realistic. No, that one was good. <laughs> here's the realistic long-term approach to this. It's one game. It's in a unique environment in a different country. Um, it feels like a spring training exhibition game. Even though you're playing against a division rival, it feels like an exhibition game. So I'm I'm having a hard time taking all of this seriously. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get where you're at, but I feel like every win matters. It because they they I mean, 
I just feel like the ones that you can get, you really want to get. That's all. That's all. Okay. That's, what, that's what I'm looking at this Padre team. So you had a chance here, and you blew it. We have an AC coming up in 10 minutes. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. 8.30. Right now, Red Pill, Blue Pill, we'll go quick with these because we got Kevin coming up. Red Pill have every Padres game start at 3 a.m., and they easily make the playoffs. Blue Pill, normal playing schedule. You get to watch every game, but it's a fight for the playoffs. I'll oh. take the Red Pill all day long. All day long. Yeah. All day long. Yeah. yeah. Start them at 3. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. I mean, well, for us, it's actually. Uh, yeah, are that's, you Red Pill also? Oh, hell yeah. For us, yeah. that's easy, dude. We get to watch the <laughs> second half of the game come on, immediately react. But for Padre fans in general, just to take that pressure off, come on. They don't have to ride the roller coaster. That'd be great. I actually, yeah. So Red Pill for sure. Right. All right what, what do you got next, Fletch? Red Pill, break your ankle in two places. <laughs> Blue Pill, go through Jim Russell's kidney stone experience, which he, I don't know if you guys have heard. He had to have the like catheter the whole oh, time. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. had to have all sorts of surgeries done. We answered this yesterday. Um, this was a random question that was brought up yep. by Darren Smith after you posted your picture. Uh, we both said broken ankle. Now, yeah. you're the only person who's experienced a broken ankle on this show. Here's the deal, guys. It freaking hurts. What? <laughs> have you ever had a so catheter, bad. though? Have you ever had a catheter? No, I haven't. What if you break Jim's ankle and then he puts a catheter in you? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, listen, if you're doing that, we're streaming it live. We're doing a John I mean, and Jim I Big mean, Rich TD and Plus because, crossover. I'm just saying, because then they could both speak to it on authority. You know how weird that would look? It's like, all right, so we took the two bald guys on our station. Oh, come on. And they, and we made them hurt each other. It was a lot of wiener stuff. Look, I'm taking red pill, though. Break all my day. ankle. Yeah, break my ankle. Yeah, I never want to go through that again, mm. but I also don't think I'd want to tube up my wiener. So, yeah. <laughs> break my ankle again okay. right all right next one red pill you look like a fish blue pill you smell like a fish Holy <laughs> jesus um <laughs> i would i would go red pill in this only because <laughs> if i look like a fish i think i'd wear a suit every day because i think it'd be cool to have like a fish and a shirt and tie that's actually a really good yeah. point you know what you like hmm how can I say this without offending you horribly? <laughs> kind of look like a fish right well, now. I was just saying, like, what, like you if know, I had gills? Like, if you put a fish in a suit, like, you're thinking, like, where is its neck? <laughs> but, uh, also, like, have you guys seen Finding Nemo? You know, in yeah. the aquarium, in the tank, they have, uh, I think his name's Bloat, and it's the puffer fish. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You kind of look like what? him. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> is Emiliano here? God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've gotten rounder. Yeah, yeah. So a former employee came by the station yesterday. He hadn't been here in a couple of years. He sees me. He says, hi. The first thing he says is, wow, you've gotten rounder. You know what, though? <laughs> to his credit, though, he look. He's he one, didn't see you six months ago. Yeah. And, 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 and also, Thank you. And, well, <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and he's one to talk because when you look at Emiliano, you're like, what are you doing yeah, right? It's kind of a brown TD. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rich, yeah. smell like a fish, look like a fish? Oh, dude, 100% look like a fish. The, the, the there's wh- a big mermaid kink out there. Do yeah. I'm Wait, telling well, you. There, there is? There's, yeah. a shoe, there's, a sh- man. <laughs> there's a shoe for every foot. I, but the stinkier, the worst chances you have with the ladies. That's absolutely right. Red pill, control fire with your mind. Blue pill, control water with your mind. I just, Are you watching the Avatar, like, wh- first airbender right now? No. No, are there fish people? Uh, no, that's the fire and water, is oh, it? Oh, yeah, I don't know. You know what? So I had like these toys as a kid. I can't remember what they were called. And, yeah. and they were like these little figures that had these things on the front. You had to put your thumb on them to change the color. And it would say whether or not they were earth, wind, or fire. And I don't know why that popped into my head. Do you remember? <laughs> I think I think control water. I think I want to control fire. I mean, I think controlling fire looks way cooler, but like you'd be way more powerful controlling water. I think so too. The earth is made up of almost 80% water. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd be more powerful controlling fire. No, because no one would ever mess with you. But but, you control the whole world if you control water. And and like I could put out the fires. It's a good point. So So like what whatever you threw at me. (laughs) Have fun, buddy. Fire also like evaporates water can oh, it can I mean, but it takes so if i had unlimited fire you had unlimited water it would be a stalemate well hmm. hold on like is your fire like the temperature of the sun Wait, yeah it's hella hot bro i, I didn't know that like we were fighting someone who had control of the opposite like well, no, it changes the algebra a little bit can we go back to the fish question it's way to, easier do we have to fight each other <laughs> yeah yeah I, bro I think, I, I think i'm still going water speaking of fight each other one, we got Kevin AC coming up. Oh, you you want to hang on for that? Two, 
If you'd like to challenge us to any games at Dave and Buster's, yeah. we're going to be there this Friday. Uh, watch party for the Aztecs. Uh, things get started at 1030. Doors open at 10. Come by and see us, see us. We have a ton of great prizes there. But check it out, man. Dave and Buster's. You can catch all the college basketball tournament games in March at Dave and Buster's. Their menu is insane. It's new, improved, just delicious man it doesn't matter what comes out of that kitchen it is absolutely delectable but we're talking about the games new games you've never seen before they get all the new stuff and they got the old ones too they got guitar hero back in the corner love to go there and you know compete against others i don't know if anybody really competes you know what i'm saying but they got a ton of tvs ufc fights baseball basketball whatever it is man it is
and twenty one. Seven and twenty one. Was it seven and twenty one? Uh, something in, like that. In one run, or twenty three. It was. It was in that ballpark. Okay. Baseball Andre. reference. Hashtag sports. How many? Oh, there we go. Okay, check this out. The record last year, according to Stat Muse, was they had a record of seven and twenty three in one run games. Oh, that doesn't feel good. No. No, but this did not end a one run game. It was a one run game in the eight. Yeah. Yeah. No, I um, understand that. Yeah. It felt though, very similar to things that we saw last season. However, one game is not a microcosm of things to come necessarily. One game does not determine a season. Obviously there's 161 left. However, when you're waking up in the morning and obviously hope is on your side because that is what fuels you all off season long heading into the regular season of any sport, any team that you care about uh, this, this probably dashed a little bit of hope for some of the fans and listeners and viewers out there who were watching along with us today as the Padres took on the Dodgers and it was an unfortunate end, but we have them tomorrow. Kevin AC on San Diego sports. Seven sixty is brought to you by Hamul casino, Hamul casino, fun above all else and we have kevin ac right now so kevin ac out in seoul south korea ut writer padres insider for this station best friend of this show mm -hmm. kevin how you doing this morning and i do mean morning 12 30 in the morning korea time that is true i think yes you are correct i'm great just fantastic <laughs> that doesn't little, sound like uh, sarcastic. Yeah, I mean, like you were that. I will say this. Let me just say this. It's been a great week. This place is magnificent. Everywhere except the Gochio Sky Dome is magnificent <laughs> in the city. The food you can't help but just let like, you trip and fall into good food. It is. It is great. I think the Padres have enjoyed themselves until tonight. Um, you know, even guys that were sort of like, ah, oh, you know, we got to go a lot across the country, and there were some valid concerns that they had and still have. They've embraced it. Um, it's been a great trip. Uh, yeah. So there we are. You know what? And it's uh, twelve thirty, and I got like five hours of work to go. So whatever. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Kevin, uh, at the ballpark there in South Korea, do they serve hot dogs and cracker jacks and beer, or is it, or is it different? They, they, I don't know about Cracker Jacks. Yes, they have hot dogs. They've got pizza. They have some. Uh, it's basically like fast Korean food. And it's uh, just about as good as American fast food. <laughs> but the rest of the food here is amazing. But the ballpark is garbage. <laughs> is oh, it, wow. Is, wow. It, is it also very expensive at the ballpark? Or did you see any prices there? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe it's hard for me to do math. I got to be honest with you. Yeah. It's like you know, twenty three thousand won for uh, some uh, chicken. So mm. yeah, I guess that's kind of a lot. I think that's like eighteen bucks. Yeah, Listen, that's probably a lot. Kevin, if twenty three thousand are Wong, I don't want to be right. Lap. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Got, I mean, there's what? Yeah. Even Kevin said it. God. I mean, I, I don't could, think there's even a tinge of racism in there. So oh, yeah, gone. <laughs> Hashtag racist. Hashtag <laughs> he's trending. Hey, Kev. So, uh, food aside, and we do want to get the full update on like what you've been eating, not at the ballpark. That sucks at the ballpark, sucks. But what happened on the field, I guess, tonight, this morning, early? Uh, what did you see from the Padres that concerns you? What did you see that makes you happy? Well, they didn't hit very well, but look, Tyler Glass now is a really good pitcher. There's a reason he got like $136 million, uh, and you know, they traded for him. Uh, the Dodgers are, that's a really tough lineup. Um, they lost the game. I, now look, I, I know they lost it, not in familiar fashion in terms of the ball that went through Jake Cronenworth's glove, but like, you know, again, they just, they, they didn't capitalize, but they did make some things happen. They, they did, you know, Mike Schilt, like, I mean, managed like it was the playoffs, which he has that luxury, right? Uh, as Joe Musgrove and, and, uh, Michael King available to pitch tomorrow, um, and, and so he has some length there, uh, he used uh, what, uh, eight pitchers, um, seven relievers after you Darvish, but they got a week off. So, um, uh, concerned after game one. Yeah, sure. Like the kind of stuff where you put it down and, uh, you know, you write it down and you go, okay, we'll, we'll be watching this. Um, you can't go back to last season, um, and say, oh, well, what about this? And what about this? Um, not yet, at least, uh, I thought there were some good things. Hey, Kevin, when you think about this game and you think about what we saw all last season and you think about sort of the tone of the clubhouse, of the front office, the problems that existed, 
Everybody knows the stat, but we'll remind you of it. Seven and 23 record in one run games. I know this wasn't a one run game, but it was up until the eighth inning when the Dodgers kind of poured it on there. Is this, does this feel eerily similar to you too? Or does this feel like, okay, unique environment, kind of an extension of spring, no big deal. Kind of like that. This is really a weird situation because the whole thing had a, a playoff type buildup, right? I mean, it's two games. They haven't played in a week. Um, there's, I mean, there's a lot of hype about it. Uh, then again, the pitcher usage tonight by Mike Schilt. I mean, it, and then you go, oh my gosh, there's 161 games to go. There's one more, then a week off, and then 160 games to go. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it you can you can look at some things and go, all right, let's keep an eye on it. Just don't again. Xander Bogart's got a hit with the runner in scoring position, so that was something. Hey, hey. Um, J- Jackson Merrill put the ball in play, moved a runner over. Um, you know, uh, wow. That, wow. like look, Tyler Glass now is good, guys. Like again, they're playing the freaking Dodgers. I'm not making excuses for them. At some point, they got to beat the Dodgers, but they just lost the game to the Dodgers. Like, yeah. okay, I don't, I don't, well, okay. They don't play the Dodgers 162 times. I don't mean to sound like Manny Machado. That's what he said um, yesterday. But, um, you know, they don't. And, and you know, we'll, we'll see. They blew tonight's game, but also because a ball went through the webbing on a glove. Like, I mean, at least, you know, at least ostensibly that's what happened. You know, they didn't get to Robert Suarez. How, he, how would he have done? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait another night to see. Yeah, uh, Padres insider Kevin Ac, best friend of the show here, joining us. Uh, Kevin, have you always been really sensitive to foreign currency jokes? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, yeah, sorry. Or, yeah, or yeah. Is, is this like your first time being <laughs> overwhelmingly offensive? <laughs> no. no, no. What we're talking about, Cronenworth's glove. I mean, is that uh, are, are we kind of grasping at something here? Did you feel like the Padres would have won the game? If that hadn't happened, or was it starting to have that feeling of, oh, here, here come the Dodgers? I don't know. They would have got out of it, right? I mean, I don't know. I've, I've watched the play from all angles, and certainly um, it was Max Muncy, right? Like, he wasn't out of the box. Now, Adrian Morajone wasn't busting his, you know, was, hadn't quite got to first yet either. So, uh, if it was a double play, the inning's over and the game's tied 2-2. If it was uh, one out, then um, it was the game was tied 2-2 and there was a runner on first, runners on first and third. Would they have won? Heck, I think that, I don't know. I think the answer that you want to give and that I kind of want to give and that Padres fans probably want to give is, it's the Dodgers and the top of the order was coming up in the ninth inning. And, you know, so weren't the Dodgers going to win anyway? Well, look, the fateful play was that play. Mm-hmm. And it was an odd play. And you know what? The Padres had to lead the whole game. Um, who's to say they weren't going to get it after that? Now, bottom of the eighth looked awful familiar, didn't it? Like, yep. like I don't know. What was it? Like minus six pitches and the inning was over? I mean – um, you know, so that, that looks familiar. Yes, there, there was, there were things where you go, eh, but I mean, I got an awful lot of games to go for me to be overreacting after first game. Only 161 more Kev. So that's, that's all you got left, <laughs> but uh, you caught up with Cronenworth after the game. It looks like you have a quote from him in your article. He says, I thought it was an easy double play. I caught it on the first bounce. That's the way it goes. It sucks. I don't know what else to say. What else was the vibe in the clubhouse after that? You wrote that it was a pretty dejected clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, that's a terrible way to to, to lose a game. Uh, they did some things right. I think they felt like they did some things right. They felt like they did some things wrong. Um, look at Tyler Wade. He made some nice plays. He made a very costly play. Um, you know, there was again. It was. It was. Look, they've come a long way. I, I do think here's something to watch. I think it's maybe. It's been rough. Like guys are, like I said, they've enjoyed it, but your sleep is messed up here. And you know what? It gets more messed up when you travel east. So I, th- I think they're just like, hey, let's get to the ballpark tomorrow, play a game, and get on that 11 hour flight home um, is where I think they're at now. Kevin AC, last question from us. One word answer. Um, dugout dancers, yes or no? Just one eight. Well, word. Well, yes, then. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they can. Love here. All 
stuff. I don't know how much the cheerleaders have to do with it, but I'm not arguing with them. I'm not either. Um, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I mean, I'm all, I'm all for that. Sure. Okay. The crowds here are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's no question. Bad stadium. Um, uh, but, but really good <laughs> Bad stadium. Crowds. Good crowd. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Kevin AC. Thank you for the time this morning. We'll do it again next week. Stateside. Appreciate you, brother. Take care guys. Kevin AC on San Diego sports, seven sixty. brought to you by Hamul casino. With thousands of slots, table games, and a sports bar voted San Diego's best, Hamul Casino is always a fan favorite. Call in at exactly 845 to win those social D tickets. All you have to do is call up Benjamin Fletcher right here, our very own Fletch, at 877-767-4760. That's 877-SORG-760. If you want to win those social D tickets, you just have to tell us how many won the South Korean currency, how many won did Kevin AC reference in that interview? And you're going to see social distortion. How about that? Mm. I think oh, that's I great. TD, can you come in and answer the phone for that one? <laughs> yeah. Because I got to tell everyone how I got so skinny. Yeah, Woo! no problem. No problem. And the way we got so skinny, all three of us, was with SDFatLoss.com. Our friends Wayne and Chloe over at SDFatLoss.com, they painted out the roadmap for us to this uh, skinny, beautiful nature that we now live in. Right? <laughs> Happened with all three of us. It was honestly crazy. <laughs> How quickly we lost the weight because it happened within three or four weeks for all of us. What were you guys laughing at? <laughs> the skinny, beautiful nature that, that we all we're live all in. in now. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's like your ad libs get more and more bizarre. <laughs> Are you high on painkillers after after no, the ankle? I the took my painkiller at like three thirty-five this morning, so it's actually worn off by now, and I'm actually in a lot of pain currently. <laughs> Which maybe that's leading, but I'm, but less pain than if you had fifty more pounds added dude, on you. Okay, right. I honestly yeah. had that epiphany last night because while I was trying to get in the shower and that was a mess of its own, I was like, I asked Kendall, I was like, could you imagine if I was forty pounds heavier right now? Because oh she gosh. was having to like kind of help lift me up into the shower. It was just a disaster, and dude. You couldn't probably see things to point at. Like I need this to be washed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah can you wash here? You don't know folds. how <laughs> right you are, Travis Dale. <laughs> uh, but SDFatLoss.com is the place to go so that if you have a horrific disaster in your life it's a little bit easier because you're not 40 pounds overweight uh seriously though get on over to sdfatloss.com today talk to wayne and chloe they will build you out a roadmap so you can have success here in 2024 because even if you made that new year's resolution in january if you haven't stuck to it well guess what by the time may comes around you could still be down 20 to 30 pounds sdfatloss.com today if you don't lose any pounds within the first 10 days they will give you your money back. SDFatLoss.com. Go check them out. Start having success like we did. Brian Ducker and the Scarlet and Black are headed back to the NCAA tournament. The journey begins Friday morning when we go live to Spokane as the fifth seed Aztecs face number 12 seed UAB in the opening round. Our coverage starts at 10 a.m. with the Aztecs countdown to tip off on your exclusive home of the Aztecs and March Madness, San Diego Sports, 760, America's finest sports station. Hi, I'm Nicole Donnelly, owner of Miramar Kitchen and Bath, also chair of the local chapter of the Better Business Bureau. I find that the slogan for the BBB, start with trust, and as owner of Miramar Kitchen and Bath, where we believe your experience matters, that's why our experience matters, are two key reasons to consider our company for your next kitchen or bathroom remodel. Contractors license 657 Miramar Kitchen and Bath. Casino, San Diego's newest and closest casino. Inviting you. Grab the brackets. Head on out to Tony Gwynn Sports Pub. You can experience all the hoops action in March. Plus savory bites, Tony Gwynn Sports Pub, where fandom meets fantastic. Voted best sports pub six years running by the readers of the UT poll. Also end of the month, Easter brunch, prime cut. Couldn't be better. You can have a sumptuous Easter brunch, prime cut, steak and seafood.
And if you want to watch alongside all of us, and I mean the entire station's lineup, show up at Dave & Buster's. Doors open at 10 on Friday morning ahead of that Aztecs tip-off. First 100 through the door gets $10 power card. Woo! Play some video games with us. We're going to play a little game called BTD. You won't. <laughs> you won't. This man has misspent his youth. He's a video game wizard. <laughs> It was a lot different game when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't Wait, you no, no, make no, excuses no. now. Don't you make excuses now. <laughs> Just meant, uh, never mind. You know, no, no, I you know, you. nerd. <laughs> um, uh, hey, also, big thanks to everyone on the stream. We welcome you in. Make sure you uh, subscribe, follow, like, all those things, and then download the free iHeartRadio app. Listen there. That way you can take Big Rich, CD, and Fletch everywhere you go. If you review us, give us five stars. Don't waste our time with four or three or two or any of that stuff. And when you review, when you uh, rate us, if you just give us five stars, great, thank you, we appreciate it. But if you could just make the most bizarre review, that would be that'll give us a nice <laughs> chuckle, and we will read them on air. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. Like right. if you give a completely wrong description of what this show is all about, like they talk a lot of panda bears. <laughs> so really- I also like fish and suits. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to write, we will read on air. Okay, uh, bottom of the barrel today, we always bring you these stories that we couldn't get to, so we scraped the bottom of the barrel to get to them. TD, lead us off with the first one. All right, uh, kids are sniffing this pantry staple to get high. So right, right out of the Jesus. pantry. No, nutmeg. I was going to say cinnamon. That's so weird. Wait, that- yeah, so there was a cinnamon challenge, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, uh, which, which I don't know oh, what yeah, that it ended up killing someone. Yeah, I don't that think was it was when good. You scooped a like teaspoon. It wasn't much or a tablespoon of cinnamon and you tried to like dry oh, scoop. Look like a lot to me. You get you get uh, pneumonia. You no, get- it like ch- choked someone to death. Wait, they actually died from ch- like a fix asphyxiation? Yeah, cuz like what? Wow. It, the challenge was not to drink any water after it and just dry scoop cinnamon and uh, it ended up being a real problem. That was huh. national news 5 or 6 years ago. Well, I don't know. Apparently kids are snorting nutmeg and that gets you high. <laughs> Dude, Travis Tries Tuesday. What? Dude. We're doing that next Tuesday? Yeah. We're going to get you so stoned. <laughs> on nutmeg? On nutmeg, bro. <laughs> we saw this on TikTok. Um, so Travis got a pretty big nutmeg problem now. And uh, <laughs> he's going to rehab. He's going he's, to the, he's out for 30 days. He's going to the Betty Crocker Clinic. Uh, I like nutmegs. I Betty Fine Ford. I thought that was a great one. <laughs> oh, Betty Crocker. <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> Betty Crocker. Betty. By the way, the Betty Crocker house in Valley Center. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, where she uh, where she lived. You can go you can go there. It's like open on the weekends. I am I'm going to stop by. Yeah. I mean it's Big fan. it's pretty spectacular. We have the cookbook. Ben, who do we thank? Yeah. We thank Kevin Acey. We thank yeah. the roadies, the dogs, the hangers, the bangers. We thank you, Rich. We thank you, TD. Again, another thank you to the ER staff at Sharp Memorial. Like, you guys were great, and I was a disaster. So thank you for taking care of me and my ankle. <laughs> uh, thank you to everyone who texted and talked back today, and let's give away some more tickets. All right, yeah. Islands gift card coming up. Call 877-767-4760. We'll see you tomorrow. The Herd is next. <laughs> Are you all about the NBA action? You've got to try Pick 6, the newest fantasy app from DraftKings, an official partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers. 